Good morning, everyone. Welcome to finals day of the 2022 Golf Croquet World Championship here in Southwick at the Sussex County Croquet Club. And what a day it's going to be. I have started the stream early, chat away on the stream. Um, I'm going to be off doing a few other jobs, but I will be back to introduce you to your commentators. We've got a full house of volunteers today helping to run your live stream. And I hope you enjoy your croquet. See you soon.
AC twice. AC twice. That's what I've just typed for the benefit of the. Yeah. All right. Good morning from Southwick. I'm joined by Chris Roberts. Um, good morning, Chris, and good morning, everyone at home. Exciting day in prospect. Just an unbelievable day for weather even warmer than it was yesterday i think to start with and if you can see those flags um you probably can't because the camera is probably not pointing in the right direction but there's not a breath of wind that's right we had the uh, last time i was on commentary i uh, i thought i'd pull a, a fast one on uh, on ewan burridge and get him to name all the flags in order which was somewhat easier because they were fluttering at the time i have to say he did did the whole lot in order absolutely correctly so uh, Slight disappointment for me because I thought I would get him on a couple of those, but never mind. <laughs> so yeah, Robert Fulford's turned up this morning and he's got a big grin on his face, not just because he's so pleased to have beaten Reg yesterday, but because there isn't a breath of wind, and he's a big person for playing in still conditions. Yeah, in the semi yesterday, he, he well, it was a. A number of reasons but I, he did pull out of a few quite a few strokes and went back and reset good uh, good good uh, practice to follow for anybody listening or watching in at home if you don't feel right get out of the stroke come back stalk the ball again and uh, and do the whole process over again it never works if you're not comfortable you're caught in disaster if you play through the stroke and try and force it so we've got two fantastic players in the final. Matthew Essek from America, a croquet professional, and Robert Fulford from England, um, who I believe is the first ever Englishman to reach the final. Is that right, Chris? Is that I'm, yes, I'm right. really thinking back. I think Stevens yeah. played in two semi-finals as a loser, and I've played in... Well, I've played in two semi-finals, one as English and one as New Zealand. Um, but I don't think anyone else that I can remember off the top of my head has got to the final as an Englishman. Right. That's that's a surprise. thing to see. I've not really cottoned onto that. And this is the 14th, 14th edition of these World Championships, and uh, well, that just uh, that, that shows, I think, possibly the uh, the, the control that uh, certainly uh, Reg Bamford has had on on these. Uh, these championships and also uh, our Egyptian friends because we've got a uh, another first in this is the first championship where New Zealand uh, sorry Egypt have failed to, failed to provide one of the semi-finalists absolutely I think more it's it's about the Egyptians really they were completely mm -hmm. dominant in the initial world championships right. uh, everyone said well they are, no, they're just unbeatable and uh, at that stage the top AC players started playing and we soon find out that that wasn't true. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. So quite a big gulf between the initial English golf croquet players of the you know 90s and where we are now. Um, so really good to strengthen up the international side. Obviously, Reg has done a huge amount. Um, I still believe that physically he's the best golf croquet player in the world. Um, but I think we, we saw yesterday during that match, there were a few times where there were better lines of play that he could have taken. And mm -hmm. over a period of time, those better lines of play, if you miss them, will cost you the odd game or two. But he's so physically talented. He's so difficult to beat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's been, he's been, the, he's been the player, the name, hasn't he, really? But in all the time I've been playing croquet, he, he's been uh, the name that goes with best in the world uh, on, on most for most people's uh, perspectives, and he's the name that most club players, if if they if they said name name a top player, Reg Bamford is the name that everyone, everyone quotes, and then that's the one. Certainly, from a golf croquet perspective, yes, that yes. would be true. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's fantastic to watch some of the shots he comes out with, uh, some of the jump shots he makes look easy that other players are actually physically incapable of playing on their best day. Yeah, that's right. 
and when you add in his wonderful positional play on top of that and and, and his mental strength as well isn't it he doesn't get seem to get flustered about anything you never see a great deal of emotion the uh, the most you get is uh, is a wipe of the brow and a, and a wipe away of the the negative feeling and he straight straight away lost that and into the next next stroke whenever that's going to be i think that was probably what was most surprising to me yesterday isn't that he got 2-1 and 6-4 up and from that position lost the fourth game with that somewhat careless shot at 11 where he peeled Robert allowing him down to hoop 12 yeah. and then followed it up with what was basically a trouncing in the fifth game 7-2. Indeed and then on the uh, what would have been the uh, seventh hoop in that that one you know a jump shot from the boundary, which we've all seen him execute time and time again. So I thought it was a poor shot. Yes. He didn't seem to get into that shot at all. It was he didn't seem to, the mallet speed didn't seem to be fast enough. It fell short. He was of course dead unlucky that he peeled uh, peeled Robert's ball through. But that was the killer. He was behind in the game already, and from that position, tough um, to come back. Really tough to come back. And I think uh, he, he kept at it. And of course we had that tremendous standoff at. Um, uh, at hoop nine, wasn't it? For, for where we we had lots of what am I going to do, and a tremendous amount of thought went into and into what stroke to try and play to try and save the game. And uh, very good point you make there. He he was basically almost wired. He had about six millimeters with one ball, mm -hmm. and he had zero with the other ball. And uh, Ewan in the commentary box is saying time and time again, just move your partner ball with your first shot. Mm. Cut your partner ball so the partner ball next time can clear that ball. Yes. And it was clearly the right line of play. And obviously, Reg just didn't consider that. He didn't consider that one, no. I, I must admit, I, I, I was watching from probably the wrong corner. I was watching over from cor corner, uh, corner one, so it didn't have the same line that you had from the uh, the commentary position that you had in the in the control box um but the amount of time that went into actually the thought of that yeah. you thought that might, might have come might up cross, at, yeah indeed his mind at some point yeah. so we've got the two players on the lawn now let's try and focus on today's match and um what are your thoughts about how this final is going to pan out chris well we were discussing off air a moment ago so i'll, I'll pinch you pinch your line a little bit I think Matthew has been absolutely tremendous right from the very first day. I played him, I think, on the second day. And of all the players I played, he's a different class to me, obviously. I'm, uh, I was always uh, seeded and, and indeed followed through with my uh, predicted plate position. But he, he, he's scored hoops and, um, and made his positions and his clearances like nobody else I saw on the, in the first half of the, of the event. Um, he made hoop running look easy, done these very challenging hoops, and I think he missed one clearance. But so he's been my, I've been saying all, all term, he's the player to watch. Um, but of course, um, Rob is, uh, is is fantastically difficult to beat, isn't he? And you had a good observation you told me about off air that uh, the way you see this going, Chris. So you you. Yeah, I mean, from my perspective, if Matthew holds his game to the same level that it's been the rest of the tournament, Matthew wins. That is black and white to me. Right. But what has happened, not just through this tournament, but through the, the Open British Open Championships, is Robert's style of play, this constant positioning, refusal to take hard clearances on and occasionally miss one, he's constantly putting balls in the opponents are ending up running three yard hoops knowing he's two foot in front if they miss yeah. and over a period of time it's shown even with a edge yesterday who you mm. wouldn't think that would really affect that the mental pressure that that's putting on them has destroyed in many cases their game and the level of performance they've brought into the match hasn't been the level of performance that they've actually produced during the match yeah, that's that, that that's been it. I think it, it's been surprising that Rob hasn't changed his style of play from from that which we know he always does. Very some excellent positional play, 
putting the pressure on the opponent slow and deliberate quite a slow pace not to not perhaps to everyone's um everyone's enjoyment but he's here to win and he plays to a uh, an acceptable if slower pace than most um and that tends to make the other player almost seem to adopt the same tactic they seem to ad ab abandon their own style of play and try and replicate Rob's. Exactly. Wasn't it strange to see Reg stop hitting the ball hard yesterday? Indeed. Yeah, that's right. He was. Well, he was. It was. He, you, you, if you hadn't seen who was on the end of the mallet, you'd think it was Rob, wouldn't you? You would. Yeah. You would. Yeah. Really, very strange that. Um, so, I got both semi-finals completely wrong yesterday when I predicted them. Right. So I'm not going to even give a prediction today because my val my opinion is clearly worthless. <laughs> right. But what I'm going to say is if Matthew plays well, yeah. I think the match is his for yeah. the winning. Right. My one other prediction was I thought all the games in the match were going to be close. 7-5, seven, 7-6, seven, that sort of game. Right. Um, so I'll be surprised if we get any 7-2s in this. Yeah. Um, and... It should be another fascinating challenge between two different styles, techniques. Um, Robert, obviously, much more experienced. Robert's about 50, I think he's 53 next month. Five-time AC World Champion. Won basically every single event there is to win at AC. Um, current Open Champion at GC. Yes, sir. We should, we should, don't, shouldn't overlook that. Doesn't play every year in the British Open. No. Um, has had you know significant family responsibilities over the past seven or eight years that has limited the amount he can play. Is constantly carrying a wrist injury that limits the amount he can practice. And you have to almost compare it to you know your Tiger Woods. Can he come back from this, you know, quite serious injury, um, playing a code that, you know, he's not used to? And if he wins this, there's always at Croquet the big question of who's the goat? Who's the goat? The greatest of all oh, time. <laughs> the goat. I have heard that one. We're getting, we're getting laughed. I laughed off, off, off camera here as well. So, off, off American camera. football, we've got Tom Brady. People say Tom Tom Brady's the goat, and yeah, people guess. say Tiger Woods the is the goat, goat, or some people say Jack Nicklaus is the Jack goat. Jack Nicklaus, but, yeah. Um, and there's this big thing at Croquet: who's the goat? And the goat? it's difficult to move between eras. You've obviously you can go back and you go you John Solomon, John Prince, you know, Bob Jackson, and yeah, work through the years. But in our generation, there are clearly two players who've stood out above um, anybody else. Um, and that's Robert and Ridge. Yeah. And Ridge currently has more world titles. Um, Rob's got lots of other stuff in his resume um, and probably hasn't had as many opportunities as Reg over these last few years. Yeah. Um, so this is sort of Rob's opportunity to move up the goat. Up the goat ranking. That's right. Um, on the goat mountain, you'd say. Uh, yes, suppose, indeed. Yeah, that would be would be fair. Just uh, you mentioned John Solomon there. We uh, you, might, you might better pick it up on the background. Um, if uh, just over Matthews, uh, as you look at it, um, uh, to the to Matthews right, we're playing on the John Solomon lawn here at um, at Southwick. So that's uh, that's very appropriate. Uh, I mentioned three years ago when uh, Ben won. Wasn't it appropriate that we had a Solomon Grip player win on John's lawn? Oh, right, um, yeah. And Matthew is obviously a part time Solomon, part time Irish, so he's trying to get all, is, all is, bases is, is, covered. That's right. So is he, is he, is he swapping um, depending on what stroke he's playing? He's, Absolutely. He's that, so yeah. during the match, you'll see for his firm clearances, mm -hmm. Matthew will use Solomon Grip. Yeah. Um, and for positional play and mid-range um, clearances, he'll use an Irish grip. Right. He's just done exact. He's just done exactly that. I don't know if he's caught on the camera. Possibly not. Uh, we're looking at the different part of the court, but he's right in front of us, and he's just played one shot. And uh, one we... shot with his with his Irish grip to position a ball in the middle on just to give him something soft to aim at, aim at while he's warming up and then he switched straight away to the Solomon. Yeah, and what we found clearance. 
during the semi-final against Robbie Fletcher was we thought that his strokes with his Irish grip were better than his strokes with his Solomon. With Solomon. Right. Um, so a um, normal thing to do as a player is in your 10 minute warm up, practice the element you're weakest at. Right, um, yeah. So you can see he's taking on a firm clearance there. And I think there are two things that um, Matthew's been doing particularly well. And the first one is running hoops. Mm -hmm. And the second one is clearing nine to 11 yarders. So we're not just talking about our basic seven yard that he's practicing here. We're talking about from the north boundary to a ball that's maybe three, four yards in front of hoop two. Yes. Um, and the central contacts that he's been getting have been fantastic. And that the cleared ball has been off the south boundary. That's right. And then the, se the center ball clearance is absolutely everything, isn't it? Because it's you'd, you'd back players of this standard to hit to make the roque most times yeah but if you're going to make the roque and star burst off you're only really putting off the inevitable till the next to the next rotation yeah because of course your opponent comes back first that's so. right and this sort of position yellow at hoop two if matthew's on the north boundary mm -hmm. matthew's going to try and clear that, ball. clear that ball if robert's on the north boundary robert's going to try and play a blocking ball in between yellow and the hoop yeah so that's, so that's the, going to be the one of the differences it I is yeah. it's going to be quite a diverse set mm -hmm. of styles and if matthew can maintain that level of form he should win yeah I, we, were, we were talking about this the other, the other day with a few of the younger english lads about which style is best and i think i have to go with the and he's yeah, he's nicked that one as well. So he's uh, his eyes in. Um, yeah, it's it. I think if the the stronger clearance player, I for me, wins as long as he plays well. If he doesn't play well, then the positional player mops up. And I don't know if that's too simplistic. Well, well it seems to be. Yes, that is very much sort of my view, and that's why I've been saying throughout. As soon as Rob encounters someone playing on form, mm. I think he'll lose. Yeah. And yesterday, I anticipated he would lose because I just didn't think, after three days of wonderful play from Reg, that he'd suddenly fall back to where he was maybe six weeks ago and really start struggling. Mm. Um, normally, once Reg is in, that's it for the tournament. That's it. Yeah. And well, sometimes well, he doesn't ever get in, but two or three days of fantastic play... He mentioned someone he thought he was in his best form of his life. Did he? Right. Um, well, that's, that's quite something. Yeah. yeah. So it's best of five looks, again today. Yeah. And it looks like we're uh, we're just finishing. Rob's completely happy with uh, his pre pre match. I'm confident we are not going to get a nine hour match, simply because I don't think Matthew has the patience. Yes, yes, that's true. Uh, yeah, if it, if it keeps going for uh, keeps going for that long, then, uh, then yeah, Matthew's going to take on more hoops, more, more hoops, and get get maybe get more fed up with it perhaps than uh, than, uh, than, the, than the pair yesterday. I mean, even even the uh, the early games, they played four games in their semi. Remember, and even though um, it was over in a, over in half the time of the other one, that only took one game longer. Yeah, so. Very much getting on with it so uh, just the last few strokes now of the warm-up just getting that pace towards towards hoop one and we've already got that's going to be it the south and east boundaries packed with chairs and that's before it's even begun um, so i'm certainly expecting the crowd will double during the day and they'll probably take mm. these shady spots because we're out in the glaring sun so we're in the, we're in the bleachers <laughs> and um yeah i think i'd be in the shade if i wasn't out here and so robert's won the toss and we're going to be getting started should be a cracking match and rather nicely just uh just for you to bear in mind if you if you stop following it ball by ball by ball Ra matthew rather nicely is wearing a red cap and playing the red ball so that's uh, a good reason a good reminder. Good positional shot from Rob. Fairly straight hoop. I don't think 
<laughs> it should be good enough for Matthew to shoot twice. I think it's quite, it's long enough away that I would play in with the first it, ball here. He's got his Solomon grip going. He though. has, you're so, right. And he looks this to me, shooting. this is shooting. And immediately from that first stroke, I think we can see this is going to be faster. Yeah, you know, Reg would have gone, nah, it's a long way back. It's hoop one of the first game. Our first ball I'm going to play in. Yeah. I'm going to actually force him to run that um, with my ball in better position. Yeah. Matthew's gone, no, I'm going to back my actual physical ability. I'm going to shoot. The match is going to be dependent upon how I play. That one's a bit bit longer than he'd like. It is. So, uh... so second go for Matthew at blue. Same line as red. And one of the benefits of Robert's sort of mid-paced game is that if he runs hoop one, he's got a good chance of running it up to hoop two. Yeah, it's a, it's a not nice and smooth. Let's see what he let's see how he copes with this. We've got a few. Uh, Yeah, and that's a beautiful actually shot. ran it um, harder than I expected. Yeah, and it isn't going to quite get off the lawn, but that's about three yards off the north boundary. So there's quite a dead area now to the right of hoop as you as you look at it for Matthew to put his ball in, and that won't be far off being wired. I'm not sure. No, it looks open. like it is open. Definitely it? open. It needs slightly more. In good hoop running position, yeah. Uh, Robert won't even think about shooting at this, and we'll play another ball in. Um, quite quick up by hoop two. Once you get about within six yards of it, it really does pick up pace, and that's past it, yeah. I think, unless it's that's in the jaws. That's, gonna, that's just going to keep going. Yeah. So yeah. Um, he'll be really disappointed with that. That's a, that's a weak stroke. And moving from one area to another on this lawn is tricky because you were mentioned when I was sitting sitting commentating with you. I think it was yesterday. Uh, the different pace. I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera at home, but it's brown at this end, and under the under the shade of the trees at the other end, somewhat greener. Yeah. and no player in the tournament will have played that type of shot in Matthew's games. No, everyone else everyone will have cleared else, the everybody red. Everybody else will have cleared him. Absolutely. Mm, Robert's put a block in, mm -hmm. giving an easy clearance. Yeah, and it's all about where red's rends up. And, and now red, Robert red's will... ended up blocking yellow. Rob will try the double clearance or right. potentially take hoop position. You'll have to go and have a look at the blue on the boundary, and if blue can hit the red ball, it's interesting to mm. take position. But that, that was a good shot by Matthew. He put the red exactly where he wanted to put it, taking account the, the clearance and the uh, and the ricochet off. Yeah, so I think we'll see a double clearance attempt here. Mm -hmm. And he's missed that missed yellow. That, so, so. Let's try and look at some positive sides of that shot. Mm -hmm. When yellow runs the hoop, red's going to have to take position at three from a long way away. Long way away. Uh, 
kind of lovely. It is good. So yellow's come off the lawn here, and, and Rob's entitled to move the yellow as an outside agency. That's right, yellow's a dead ball. And this is the most difficult hoop to take position at. It's the fastest area. Uh, Rob's <laughs> just probably three balls short of where he wants to be there. Yeah, but taking a conservative line because it is so difficult this early in the game. He's, uh... And when you're playing in from where Red is, Matthew may decide just to hit it off the north boundary in front of the hoop. Yeah. So you don't want to finish sort of short, leaving blue and easy clearance on red to a long boundary. And the one guarantee you can't be cleared is to hit it off the lawn. Off the lawn to see so... what he does. He's... It's the Irish grip, so it would suggest a positional shot. Uh, this is going off the lawn, isn't it? Not no, sure. maybe not. No, I think that's... In three hours' time, yeah. that will be off the lawn. Yes. <laughs> As it is, it's a really good shot. Yeah. So uh, you may think Blue's got an easy clearance on red, but it's to a short boundary, and Matthew will be completely happy with that. Mm. Just while there's a break in play, I don't know if you're picking up anything on the uh, on the effects mic, but we've got um, a, a drummer enthusiast in a nearby house, so we've got a bit of jazz piano and um and drum practice so hopefully the the gentleman in the house will be uh, getting his fill of that it's quite a nice first thing in the morning but he could uh when he gets his heavy rock stuff going this afternoon we'll uh, let's hope he has something better to do than that maybe he's watching gonna watch this Uh, it's and just pulled up. Yeah, it did. It just stopped up, did it? There's a green patch just where that ran over. It's so hard to judge. So it's significantly slower than the lawns were mid-afternoon yesterday. Um, this lawn's been mown overnight. And I think, you know, if this match makes it to 2 o'clock, they'll be two seconds faster. Yeah. Disappointing shot from Matthew. If Piello had been in front of the hoop there, this clearance that Rob's about to play on red would have left red, the clearance on black with the yellow mm. in front. And now Rob's just doing this, trying to get back to neutrality position. I do think that Matthew's having to think, think about this. Is he going to clear black to be on the safe side? He's thought about not doing it, but he's changed his mind. Here comes the soft clearance, I should think. Yeah, Matthew's going to put, be put in more tactical dilemmas in this one match than he's probably faced in the rest of the tournament. And it, it is almost guaranteed he's going to make some poor decisions. And uh, that has to be one of the elements that... In Rob's favour. Is in Rob's favour, yeah. because... Yeah, there aren't many others. Um, so, highly intelligent shot again. Were Matthew to take position, Robert could potentially rush black behind yellow, large from red. Yeah, I can see that. Yep. As it is, mm -hmm. if it's left there, it can run the hoop. There's just yeah, so many good, good things about that position. But lovely clearance there from Matthew, taking control of the north boundary, yep. moving the black out of hoop running position. Um, this is what most people regard as a free go. I think Rob may decide just to take position. Yeah, he certainly, certainly looks like he's not having a go at that. And he hasn't. That's no. in character with the rest of the game. Yep. Extend mm -hmm. the hoop. Mm -hmm. Hope to get a physical get error. It. 
Lovely shot. And all that centre ball, that's very good. And Yellow will probably try and take position blocking Black's go at attempt at the hoop. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Black will try and take position blocking Just Yellow's attempt, attempt at the hoop. Attempt at the hoop, that's right. And it's these positions where I think they're going to be key in the match. How many of these hoops is Matthew going to run? Yeah. So, so uh... here it comes, Matthew, with the hoop attempt from the boundary. And equally, how many times is Robert going to block the and shot? Block that shot, yeah. And you, yeah, and you say he mock. Great oh, shot. It's good. That is a good shot. And the and noise the hoop made, to me, immediately said firm hoop. Yeah. So, failure to block yellow's hoop. So, it's going to be a big, big confidence booster for Matthew now. So, the... He'd be really up if he gets some more of those. And I think he will get a lot of those. If Rob's going to play this, this, this tactic of trying to draw the hoop out, Matthew's going to have to counter that with being bold. Yeah. Um, Stick to what's what... worked all tournament for That's yes, right. Yeah. Um, you know, Reg hardly did any of that yesterday. Mm. And to be fair to Robbie Fletcher, Robbie had a perfectly good match. I didn't see so much of that one, Chris. I, uh, yeah, Robbie didn't play badly. Matthew hit a lot of good shots. Yeah. And fabulous way to finish running 9 and 10 in the same shot. Yeah. What a wonderful way it to get through. But what, what, a, what a signal when you're on the receiving end. It's, uh... This looks good. That does look good. So, so Matthew Matthew's calling for calling, a referee. Calling for the referee. Looks like he's, un, he's unhampered here. Uh, he's got a pretty straight straight shot, one would think, by the way the ball, the ball just dribbled through the hoop there. Yeah, I think he'll be wanting to take a pop at something. Um, you know, blue or the hoop are both good results. Yeah. And he could even have a double. Might uh, I might just go and have a, have a, have a look at that. Yep. Excuse me. So, Chris, what's he got? What he's got is um, blue is blue is quite wide of the hoop. Blue's probably uh, a foot to eighteen inches off the centre line. Black is covering the hoop. Oh dear. Yeah. So uh, it's funny when I come back and sit in our position here at uh, at, at corner two. It's obvious to me now because I've had the perspective of going running over and having a look. But yeah. previously, I thought it was the other way around. I thought blue was in front of the hoop and black was wide. So. Uh, so he's got to shoot at blue. He's got to shoot at blue. Yeah, black's black's no good at all. So referee Richard Carline taking a good position, probably blocking your own view of this stroke. We can see Matthew play. Clean shot. And uh, missed uh, missed everything. Went through the gap. So. Rob obviously wants to run the hoop. Um, if you can run it by just a foot, it makes mm -hmm. his clearance at hoop five that much shorter, doesn't it? Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Whether he's got the confidence to play at that pace, I'm not so sure. Because red can easily clear you if you finish in the draws. And that's his normal hoop that, running pace. Good, as you say, just... Run through by a couple of feet, maybe a, maybe a yard. No safe place for Matthew here. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to take hoop position, and as a preference, fractionally long. Fractionally long, so that your opposition can't inherit your good one, your yeah. good place. Yeah, that's right. Um, well, that's very good. That's just dead straight. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, two balls long is better than two balls short. And Rob's taking this out straight away. 
you've got to be really, really good at seven yard clearances to take this rather than taking position. Yeah. Of course, um, Matthew could take the really aggressive line of smashing blue anyway, couldn't he? He could. So, um, ideally, you prefer to hit that on the left hand side rather yeah. than the right, so your ball's nearer the south boundary. Mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned, Matthew's going to be more aggressive. And it's another good ball in. If so. Blue misses this or decides to take possession, which I don't think it will, uh, Red will smash black away. That's right. So Rob's going to be forced into clearing this again. And again, he'll go at this mid pace, trying to keep his ball. Oh dear, I don't. See, I don't agree with that at all. And that's a poor one. You know, maybe so against here, Red so here, in the So here comes the black clearance. It's. Um... Yeah, yeah. You're backing Matthew to get this pretty well full ball. He'll be right on this uh, this north boundary and quite likely wired from one one or possibly both both hoops. Into corner two. He hasn't. He's got this. We've got the distance, maximum distance into corner two. And not only was it a shot I disliked tactically from Rob, mm. he played it physically poorly as well because he's mm. actually trying to block Yellow's hoop. Yeah, and uh, he was well short, wasn't he? And look at where Red is. So you should have a great view of this uh, at home. This, you've got right over Rob's shoulder. So we'll just be quiet while he plays this straight. Mm. An ooh from the crowd. So. And Rob thought that was definitely hitting. Mm. And interestingly, I then tend to think the entire lawn goes towards the clubhouse, and that's gone away from the clubhouse. It's hilled left to right. Right. I mentioned before we took that shot, look at where Red was. Oh, and yes. It's, you know, Red is well, pure, that's unlucky. So three yards west of hoop six. So he's in total control of hoop six before he, before he ran hoop five. Uh, unlucky to hit the centre peg there. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, not the, that not sure. The the if he's actually bounced back directly south, I agree with you. Otherwise, that ball is going off the north boundary, I think. Yeah, OK. That's, that's so I'd it. actually rather prefer it floating around the peg than on the north, on boundary, north boundary, providing yeah. it's not blocked from lots of the area in front of hoop six. Mm. So Rob doesn't want to allow yellow to clear blue, and he'll be happy enough if red can clear blue. But to me, that is well short, and yellow is open on blue. Yellow's all over it, yeah. I don't think he would have been unhappy for red. Oh, well, that's a bit further than you wanted, Matthew. But still quite an easy hoop, I think, for Matthew will be yeah. fancying that. While we're talking about the centre peg, we had a good one in uh, Matthews, must have been quarter-final, I should think, or maybe it was around the uh, the round of 16, uh, where Matthew wanted to jump over the centre peg. Yeah. And um, as we as we know, or uh, maybe people don't, when you want, if you do want to jump over the centre peg, not something most club players do, you are entitled to have the extension piece, um, which is essentially for AC, but um, you are entitled to have the centre piece the centre extension, as it's called, removed um, before you attempt that stroke. And uh, on the lawn, Matthew was playing, and we found out that the centre centre piece was actually stuck fast in the hoop and couldn't be removed. And the peg, yeah. Yeah, so the, yeah. the peg. So um, referee was called, and uh, it was Francis Coleman's um, pretty easy decision. But we had to go and source a new centre peg, absolutely, and replace it with one where you could remove the centre. Matthew then jumped over. Elegantly missed his target only just, but it was a good shot anyway. Yeah, it has been frustrating over the past 20 years that some manufacturers have created these centre pegs and the extension isn't isn't removable. Mm. And I've had lots of instances of that. So Rob's played this interesting black almost on the back of red, but I still think red can run the hoop. 
you've got, you've got a better angle from your seat, but it uh, it looks that way, doesn't it? It's the sort of shot that players like myself, with imperfect back swings, shall we say, yeah. ones that aren't straight, find difficult, but ones that people players like Matthew, who has a very good technique, find much easier. Um, so he's had a look at it, and he's also had a look at clearing black. Normally you would get a referee to watch this. He's played it at a very wide angle to avoid the double contact, to avoid the double hit and fault. Um, but still, I would have got a referee to watch it. Yeah, um, it was clean. Um, but again, this hoop that yellow's been left with is substantially more difficult than where red was. So once again, Rob's got some value by playing Point. these balls in. Yeah. Again, this is a positional shot. This isn't clearing yellow. No. He's saying, I'm putting another ball, ball in. in. I know you've got to have a go at this, but there'll be a consequence if you fail. And he's only just only missed just the wide missed spot. The spot. Here comes Matthew marching up really confidently to this. Not this time. And this is the sort of... This is, this is a replay of, um, of yesterday, isn't it? Yeah. And but... as you said, other games you've seen Rob play, it's all about the pressure. Big consequence to your hoop shot if you miss. And lots of players here will play blue to block, red at black. Rob's saying, actually, no, I'm not that keen on running the hoop with black. It looks tough to me. I am fancy getting in the jaws of the front of the hoop. He knows black can clear yellow to a mm -hmm. wide spot then. And this is far from easy, but if you get it, it's much better than blocking red at black. Indeed. Might have gone too far. Yeah. Can't quite see from where we are, can you? So Matthew possibly just the camera's panning around now, so you're picking Matthew up. He'll have to um, shoot at black, because if blue's too far, black's got a big target. Yes. Hoop sort of, he can run it off blue or directly. Yeah. Very um, sharp. Not anymore. And again, so Black's it, it, still got the in off, but Black isn't going to take this. Black's going to come that. straight back straight in again. Back in. And the beauty about where blue is, is if it doesn't run, yellow can't hit it. So it's right. not a dreadful it, ball. No. And they're and both just they're having both a look at the angles. To see what they've got there. Yeah. That's right. So is And Rob really wants to try and force yellow's clear black. So yellow isn't close to the hoop, allowing blue to niggle into the jaws again. Mm. Um so it needs to be unhoop running position, the black. And sufficiently close to sort of force yellow to feel it needs to clear. So here's Rob's positional play again. But not too close so that yellow can clear and That's retain it. position. Yeah. They want that a couple yeah. couple of feet yeah. further would have been better. So Matthew just lining up uh Finding up what he's got with red, which is very close to corner three. Can can red's red clear the black? He's quite confident it can. So he had a bit of blue. Yeah. So again, as this hoop extends, we see Robert. Piling the pressure on, getting, getting. Remember, Matthew had a significant advantage at hoop six to start with, didn't with, he? Yeah, and he's turned uh, it, turned it right round. He has. And the reason is Matthew's had that three-yard hoop shot that he's missed. Yes. And Robert's prepared to prepared give to give him that. Yeah. Just occasionally give him that. That's right. And is Matthew going to run 
80% of those and win the match? Or is he going to run 40% of them and lose the match? So Matthew from from corner three. And he nails black. That's a great shot. But all it's this... only going to put it. It's only going to put off the inevitable for another rotation. Matthew's yeah. now at the other end of the lawn. Black's going to come into a good position because Rob's so good at his position of play, and uh, he's got to do it all again in in uh, four shots time. Yeah, and all it's going to lead to is potentially yellow getting a ten yard hoop shot. I'm uh, I'm about to be relieved of my commentary. Uh, commentary seats to be replaced over so i'm going to say good morning to you good morning to you all possibly i'll come back later on don't know but i'll leave you with chris and uh just on the off chance that she's listening i should say good morning to janet job in tyneside thank, thank you chris. Hi Chris, this is Brian Maddox. Uh, he would like to ask a few questions along the way. But okay, right. absolutely. Welcome, Brian. Thank you very much, Chris. It's an absolute privilege and honour to be sitting alongside you. I followed your commentaries before, and indeed some of the wonderful things you've got on your Clark Croquet website. So that's three all. Um, quite a long hoop six there. Matthew had uh, that three yarder that he missed, and then he took on a shot from 10 yards with the yellow that just flicked the black. And I think we should probably point out he's flicked the black towards hoop seven. So not only has Rob equalized at three all, he's actually got both his balls in a very strong position for the hoop seven point. Very good positional shot there from a long way away from Matthew. And Black will probably feel forced to clear this. In an ideal world, Rob would probably have wanted to hit that fractionally further on the right. Red can clear black all the way to corner three from where they finish. So if yellow takes position, which it has done, that's an excellent shot from distance there. Rob's going to feel forced to probably take on another clearance here. Whereas if black was much close to the north boundary, Rob could just take position behind yellow wired from blue. This, of course, at a distance that is missable, whereas the previous one was, we would have got 100% of the time. It's a good clearance this time, both balls going off the lawn. Matthew. So Matthew wants to hit that just off centre on the left, taking control of the north boundary. And he's hit it on the right, which means that now black could clear the red if it wanted to. I don't think that's Rob's style this tournament. No, he's laying up almost all the time. And this is going to be a hoop attempt. It's 
So what we call a free go there. No strong position to put the uh, black ball. So he just had a free seven yarder. Interesting, though, because even in circumstances like that throughout this tournament, Rob seems to have been laying up and basically saying, I know you can clear me, but I don't care because I'll still be able to come back. And it's a very different style from the Egyptians, isn't it? Yeah, so we're in Matthew's position there. I always play yellow much close to the hoop. He's got quite a straightforward clearance red on black, um, such that he ought to be able to feel confident of hitting a quarter ball and cutting mm -hmm. it a long way south. Yeah. And had yellow taken the sort of position that blue has taken, mm -hmm. I think Rob would have felt forced to clear that. Yeah. And every time you can force your opponent to clear a ball, normally the person who's clearing is losing. And that's been an absolute feature of uh, Robert's play all this week. Hasn't he been happy to put two balls in and force it to be cleared every time? Yeah, and it'll be a little nudge in front. Yeah. They're not straightforward due to the pace of the lawn. You can get these wrong. So on an easy pace lawn, Rob mm. would probably be trying to get about three inches, two inches back from the hoop. Mm. Here he may go as much as six inches. Mm. And he's just looking at these various spots. The closer he goes, the more danger there is of him getting it wrong. Mm. So he's for a gap. It's fine. Um, the lawns have definitely been getting faster as the week goes on. Because earlier on, the positional shots seem to be reliably landing in place. Whereas even so a yeah. jump shot. Yeah. Shot. Yes, we shot. That could be Robert's undoing today, because against everybody else he's been doing those kind of shots and getting away getting away with being in his tight position and allowing people to have shots at things and with especially earlier in the week the hoops seem to be rejecting an awful lot. And whereas Matthew has managed to run two or three hoops already that putting Robert under a lot of pressure. But the thing I like about Matthew's performance so far is he's playing his own game. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Reg had a few positions yesterday like that, and he turned the jump shot down and he just played a half ball clearance and... He seemed very nervy towards the end, didn't he? He, he did. Was, yeah. and he, I mean, even as you were saying about those short ones that can run off, he had two jaws attempts from literally only, what, about a foot, which didn't succeed yeah. and, and left in both cases absolutely match-defining in-off opportunities, which so, were both taken. Not only as... Matthew taking the 4-3 lead. This black ball really doesn't get anywhere near who paid. No, black is... Uh, I'm guessing that was part of the appeal of taking on a jump shot. Yeah. I, I always prefer to take on a jump shot if, if, I, if I know my opponent's ball is hampered and you get that extra advantage. Yeah. And Rob trying to flip through the hoop to generate mm. some spin and get round that yellow, but he's actually landed almost in the middle of it and he's given yellow a much shorter clearance on the blue. Yeah. Very Matthew, close to the in-off again there. Yeah. Matthew seems to hit that length of power clearance with more accuracy than I think anybody I've seen all, all week on the on, on the streamings. Yeah, it's very impressive. Um, you know, uh, he's only really been playing GC seriously for 18 months, yeah. but we've known about his AC ability for many years now. Oh, he was the world finalist, wasn't he, in yeah. the last uh, championships? One of the questions I had for you, which I'd probably ask, is where's the distance now? Is obviously, you've always said quite rightly that players can routinely clear from seven yards, so from 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 the short boundary, and indeed full ball, as Robert's just done there. What sort of distance would you say players have to be for the chance of getting a miss from your opponent to rise to sort of say fifty percent plus? Ah. Uh -huh the 50 percent range well i think you're probably looking about obviously it depends on what level of player you're talking about let's talk this about the quarter level. finalists yeah. onwards you're probably looking in the region of about 15 yards right 
uh, most people uh, are expecting to have a what we call a critical distance, not 50% mm. hitting range, um, uh, 15 yards plus. I mean, some people will be, be more than that. Yeah. Uh, at the end of an AC tournament, we, uh, we're expecting a minimum of 13 mm -hmm. yards and it yeah. should be more in a right. GC event because you're hitting shot after shot after shot and you you don't have to come in after 20 minutes sat down yeah. and hit one good shot so yeah. you can get much more of a, a rhythm and a groove yes um it's one of the reasons why I'm, I started uh, I'd never heard of golf croquet when I first started and uh, it soon found that I really liked about GC this thing you, you don't end up sitting down for 20 minutes <laughs> Yeah, I you think lose, you lose your rhythm so horribly when you do that. Well, I think at my sort of peak, I would be about 18 yards. Right. For 50-50, yeah. towards the end of a tournament. Mm. Not day one, but towards the end of a tournament. Um, and again, that's the sort of extra distance mm. that Matthew's happy taking on. He's, you know, he's saying, look, I don't care that it's not 8 yards away mm. and that it's 12 yards away. I'm, I'm going to just take it on. And he's hit that half ball can Rob hit back and get back into this hoop? Oh, cut it in front of the hoop. So what were we talking about there, about 14-ish yards, something like that? Yeah, something, something like that. that. And obviously there's hitting and there's hitting. Exactly. And AC yeah, will go and pick say, his yeah. ball up and Isn't take it? an all-around break and do his sex tuple and at golf croquet it's worse. So this it's got to be full ball and that's the... Yeah. And the, the percentage seems to drop off quite sharply is when, once you get past about 18 yards. It seems to, for the 20, 25, 30 yards, Very much it so. seems to drop down to a more like... 10 20 percent yeah one of the questions in this match is when rob clears 15 yards away is that going to be good enough yeah. because he hasn't got the power to take a lot of shots 25 yards away yeah um the other thing i was going to mention is you you said these seven yarders are yeah you know, just mm. guaranteed mm. and that's just well, when we first started playing the english golf croquet players came back from these tournaments and they said ah oh, the egyptians just run all their seven yard hoops mm. and we said rubbish we don't believe you and uh, anyone who says people just hit their seven yard clearances that's wrong as well i've seen rob miss two four and a half yarders yeah. that he was just trying to hit and one of the things about rob is as he increases his power it his drops accuracy off, yeah. drops off um I think you said that some of that's down to possibly his issues he had with his wrists when Absolutely. trying to smash Egyptian hard balls. Yeah, so um, yeah, Robert's power now is completely limited. As a teenager, he had uh, infinite power mm -hmm. and he was known as the best cut rush player in the world. Mm -hmm. And now that power is diminished, but he has all the experience mm -hmm. and touch and tactics to try and... Yeah wheedle his way back into these matches. Mm. One of the things that's impressed me so much about him is his ability to uh, be completely unfazed by, by blocks and able to play the sort of the two ball plants to uh, the shot that we all try and it's certainly at my level you miss most of the time. <laughs> yeah, so this is potentially a snuggle. Yeah. And at this range, it's a difficult shot. The good thing from Robert's perspective, it's on the south and southern bit of the lawn. He's not got it. Where there's a bit more grass around. Yeah. But it's just hilled a bit to the right. It has. And when they go wrong, snuggles are disastrous. Absolutely. And when they go right, they're the best thing you can do. Absolutely. I mean, that's one of the other things that's really struck me this week. Because uh, I think when I've watched championships like this before and some of your commentated... Uh, things from, from other, other events. The snuggle basically it was very, very rare. It was something done under on an exceptional basis, but there's been a lot of, so it seems to be a much greater awareness of the, of the power and usefulness of snuggles this week. It seems to have been a sort of tactic of choice quite, quite a lot all week. As the game develops, due to the strength of it, mm. more and more players are going to try and get better at it. Yeah. And I'm happy taking them on from four yards away mm. at two yards they ought to be straightforward yeah 
I guess they become so because as people get more and more reliable at clearances, obviously the snuggle just shuts that out. Uh, Is this close? It's oh, it's just gone again. Not quiet. And obviously that was that uh, getting on for what nearly thirty yards, which obviously does become a bit. Uh, yeah, you're often faced with clearances towards short boundaries, where your choice is: do I want to move it an additional three or four yards away, mm. and still leave them a seven yarder, yeah. or do I put all my eggs in one basket and go mm -hmm. for the snuggle? And um, the snuggle's clearly the right option and yeah. players over time will get better at that yeah now if you can get it suitably angled that you basically there's just no shot playable unless unless they're touching and you can do the follow-through roll obviously so another nice paced boop stroke yeah um running it about six yards seven yards in front of ten and again on the fractionally on the short boundary side this is traveling again is it going to go in the jaws? This is. Pretty much, yes. That looks as if wow. it's bound to more or less in front. Mm. One thing we've seen this morning, and I think very much so yesterday as well, is that whilst earlier in the tournament there were a lot of rejections, even from quite short range on a lot of these hoops, yesterday the people seemed to be running their hoops more, and again today. Is that a factor, just a factor of the fact that we've now got the best players in the world, or have the hoops, do you think, actually become slightly more receptive as the week's gone on? No, it's down to the standard it's players. Quite, yeah. These hoops are still difficult. These are in new hoop holes today. Mm. They're in new hoop holes yesterday on lawns two and four. Oh, wow! <laughs> I didn't think that was even on. He is on fire, this guy, isn't he? Um, I think that's going to be good enough for the first game. It looks game over, doesn't it? It looks... Uh... Is so pretty special. Once get out, again, get out of that, Mr. Fulford. Having got everything of my predictions wrong yesterday, I've now immediately got my predictions wrong again today. I said I thought they'd all be close games, seven right. five, seven six, and Matthew's gone and blitzed his way into a seven three probable win on yeah. game one. I was completely wrong yesterday. I thought having the way Reg had blown his way through the tournament without losing a single game, yeah. 21 straight wins. Yeah. I think in his block stages he averaged only about 2.2 .2 hoops against. You know, Correct. I, I thought, you know, surely even Fulford's not good enough to do this, but I think he just ground him down and he wore did. him out. Didn't he, he did, he did. Um, Reg getting noticeably weaker as the match went on. Yeah. And yeah, that's why today I just wasn't as confident about mm. Matthew holding on to his pre match ability um i think he really believes he can do this and i think it's looking like he will yeah, most people wouldn't take Ooh, that on that because of that possibility idea. yes that was a risk um the other thing i should mention about that is it's just tactically really weak because mm. if you do happen to do this with a 6-3 lead, mm. Rob's got this, what I call the dream position, where partner's yeah. in front of the hoop, and you've got a clearance to yeah. a long boundary where black can follow through and get near 11. Yeah, he didn't need to do that. He really didn't. And Reg did a strange one yesterday as well, where he was, he was in hoop 12, I think, and he, he tried to rush peel it through and just left it there and left for an easy... Where it shook, I think you said at the time it was surely a better percentage bet to let it be cleared but have your ball around for the next shot oh dear that's hopeless oh, that's unfortunate so, well no yeah. it's, well, it's okay. simply a poor <laughs> shot <laughs> Sorry, um you know that yeah. was what you dream about that sort of clearance and now matthew can stop blue away and it, yeah. it's not particularly strong 
stopping mm. blue away. Um, I would take hoop position here. Mm. Um, if yellow could clear black, the ball that plays before it, it's very strong. But here, yellow is just going to stop blue away, and yellow and blue is going to come straight back. Absolutely. And yellow being six yards straight in front of hoop ten isn't really going to worry Rob too much. He's going to try and put blue. Blue. Having said that, we've seen Matthew run hoops from there this week. <laughs> So one of the things we we haven't got at this tournament is we haven't got sequence um, umpires. Right. Um, fortunately, I have been appointed as a referee, so I'm allowed to point out right. a potential wrong ball. And I think if I hadn't have mentioned that, you'd have had, you know, probably half a dozen Egyptians shouting out and making sure the order of play was maintained. Yeah. Um, but technically. It's one of the things that I found most strange when they changed the rules a few years back. They put the onus on you to uh, notify your opponent if they were about to hit the wrong ball, but then put a rule in place that effectively meant you actually had quite a strong incentive not to, Yeah. which didn't strike me as being very consistent. Obviously, with the ball swap opportunity, you've got a potentially huge advantage swing from basically lying, which obviously is not the kind of code of ethics that this game is um, run on. Now, both these players are um, good sportsmen, and um, they'll want this game to be played as it should be. Absolutely. And indeed, we've seen things, I think Toby called a foul on himself earlier in the tournament, which probably nobody else would have noticed that he'd had a foul, but he knew, and that was good enough. That's lovely central clearance there. If Matthew's open on the hoop, I expect him just to take it. Mm -hmm. He's jumping. He's that that shows how aggressive this is. Yeah. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't be jumping. I'd be clearing. I think. Yeah. There's nothing wrong at all with. Because red's still perfectly well placed to clear black. If Absolutely. Blue with yellow. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, what do we know, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Just because someone gets it doesn't mean it's the right choice. No, that is very fair. Um, and one of the things Rob said um, halfway through his match against Reg yesterday, I think at Game All or something mm. like that, was he, he thought Reg was going for some flashy shots yeah. that were unnecessary and were diminishing yeah. his chances. Yeah. Um, yeah. And as the match went on, um, those flashy shots started not to work. Yes. Uh, yeah. He tried a rush peel at hoop 12 mm. and didn't look necessary and lots of other shots. And, you know, we're in a five game match. Um, I don't think Matthew will pull out the big shots all the time. He's pulled out no. two big ones in that match. The yeah. jump through seven and the jump through ten. Yeah. Um, but I think every now and then he's going to fail one and, uh, and Rob will take advantage of that. He's just game down. They're still sort of feeling each other out a bit. But nice to see Matthew maintain the positivity Yes, that's been sort of a key part of his game. It'll certainly give him a confidence boost, won't it? While we're between games, one of the other questions I was interested in asking you was where you stood on the uh, sort of lawn pace and, and levelness question. The, uh, obviously, here, the hoops are tight. Uh, the lawn is getting faster but you'd, I'd still say fair in the sense that we, we saw Rob thriving earlier in the week with um, close positional play. Yep. There's other lawns obviously sometimes are set up so brown and hilly that actually trying to get the ball to stop where you want it to is almost impossible which seems to favour more the uh, hit it at the speed of an Egyptian so that it's uh, the all of the hills are taken out of the equation. Um, I think one of the people who was in the qualifiers last week at, uh, at Compton was suggesting he preferred it being, you know, saying more fun when it was really dry and hilly and, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a real challenge. Um, to me as a spectator, it's a, it's a much better spectacle to watch the best players in the world having difficult hoops, but at least under fair conditions. But where, where do you stand on how, what, what's, what's the best 
lawn well, setup. I certainly don't think these are unfair in any way. They're okay. not dead flat and yeah. they're multi-paced well, and they're yeah. quite fast. Yeah. But there's clear differentiation between the mm. abilities of people positionally on these lawns whereas when we were playing in june on 10 second lawns yeah basically 99 percent of the players were able to take position most yeah. of the time and yeah. here we're down to maybe 30 percent of the players are able yeah. to take position reliably but how would you say because obviously i wasn't i was suggesting these seem quite fair to yep. me there are obviously other lawns where i've had the misfortune to play myself and uh, i think these players would say that the good fortune to play themselves where, where, where they are so hilly and dry that it's it, much harder i think the world teams a few years ago was even reg bamford was struggling to get the difference between laying up short of halfway and actually going past the hoop yeah. those strike me as being too much of a lottery absolutely but... and we had that uh, issue at plimerton for the AC worlds where they weren't flat enough and there comes a level where if they go past a certain speed they do become basically unplayable yeah. and they got that um, so on a hilly lawn you wouldn't really want to be much past 11 and a half seconds yeah. on a fairly flat lawn you can get up to 14 comfortably right. but we're going to be um, changing over and I'm going to be replaced by I'm going to still call him current world champion Ben Rothman yeah. and um, uh, before I go, I'll just say one thing. Um, Jenny's sick in bed, so I hope you're feeling a lot better, love, and I hope you're enjoying the uh, match. Get well, Jenny. Okay, so here is Ben Rothman, current world champion, and this is Brian Maddox. Have a nice chat, guys, and look forward to hearing what you've got to say. All right, hello, nice to meet you. Thank nice you for to having meet you, me. Ben. Privileged to be alongside you. I was here three years ago watching you uh, on this very lawn for a lot of hours. I got very hot, but it was well worth it. Ah, yes. Well, thank you. It's it's always great to have spectators. We have quite a few today what uh over a hundred it looks like at least around uh court one not to mention we have the other satellite courts a few people out there watching yeah. the plate bowl and shield finals yeah i think the streaming coverage that has been laid on this year has been fantastic and i, w I wonder if that has actually led to some people staying at home because i think when we watched you we had people sitting two rows deep all the way around this lawn so i'd say even though this is quite a good turnout it doesn't seem quite as busy as uh, three years ago oh we have we have yet to build the facilities with bleacher accommodations quite yet but the <laughs> The streaming is great because, uh, you know, whether uh, Rob's family, uh, you know, around the country in England or Matthew's family back across the pond or even, mm. you know, our viewers from the Southern Hemisphere and Australia, New Zealand, you know, up late at yeah. night might be watching this. Yeah. Um, and, and so just the reach and the streaming, I, I want to say thank you to uh, mm. uh, certainly Allison Mom, who's been running this, and Eugene Chang, who helped uh, arrange all of this material, so uh, all of the equipment uh, for the, the CA and the WCF so that we have this opportunity. And a great clearance there by Matthew, taking mm. the, uh, not the next ball to play, but the ball that was the biggest threat, it looks like. Absolutely. Black's quite angled here, isn't it? So you do really, you do well to get this. It's difficult from where we're sitting, of course, to see quite how far back he is. It might be a better angle. Yeah, well, uh, you know, range. watching uh, watching these fellows run hoops for the last couple of days, even difficult angled shots that I might not consider, uh, yeah. these gents have been able to do well with. Oh, just unfortunate there. He might have been hoping for the jaws at that pace Absolutely. because it's so yeah. powerful in an odd hoop. Um, I don't know if Matthew would have been upset to have a go at a jump shot, but yeah. this should be a little easier to uh, hit without a jump. Yeah. Um, we certainly of course seen... famously jumped from uh, quite a lot further than that, I seem to remember. Uh, Did you do one right over a peg once? Did we that, that was in 2019. A little uh, bit of a little on, bit on this punch lawn. the air perhaps afterwards. So. Oh yeah, you know, you, you can't always stay composed oh, when yeah. uh, when you hit a shot, you you expect to be maybe a five percenter <laughs> yeah you looked like you enjoyed that one for sure it was uh forced into a situation by really good play by my opponent uh omar fami i believe and uh you know we've seen matthew with quite good jump shots here at a uh, hoop seven but uh didn't need one there 
We'll see if he might get two bites of the apple. No, oh, might need might need the jump shot here. So yeah, uh, Rob yeah. plays an excellent blocking shot. Looks like he's already got the pace yeah, after just one it's game. Not clear from here where the yellow can see blue either, is it? So... If, even if even if he could, black will play first. So whatever yeah, he sees now might yeah. be invisible in a moment. Yeah. No, I was meaning in terms of if he cleared black and left uh, left yellow to do blue, but I'm not sure yellow can actually see blue. Or all of it at any rate. Yeah, looks like looks like Matthew uh, isn't really considering the clearance. And he's looking like he wants the jump, isn't he? Possibly upset with the result of his uh, his seven yard go with yellow. He's yeah. gonna just try to make up for it with this. No, he's oh, the clearance. A great cut. Great cut. All right. He's so... travelled a long way though, of course. Yeah. Uh, so but Rob's still very much in control of the hoop, isn't he? Happy to not give Rob such a close hoop shot, or Rob could get control of hoop two as well. So uh, I, I hear you uh, are a club player That's with right. Allison's Club. Uh, yes, I play it. My prime club is a very small little club called Cheam, which has only been around for ten years. It was actually founded by uh, one of your tournament referees, Ian Cobbold, and his wife Jean, who's also here today. Uh, yes, um, uh, Ian's been a, a great help all week. Uh, excellent, uh, I believe, uh, referee of the tournament. That's right. And yeah, uh, yeah, as far right. as I know, everything's run, run very smoothly with the referees. So. Yeah. Thanks to Ian and the whole refereeing crew. Absolutely. But as you say, I also... And I guess to Cheem for lending him out to us. Yeah. Well, very kind of. <laughs> he, he plays here as well. I think he's a member here as well. But uh, I, as Alison said, I also play at Surbiton, her, her, her club, which is uh, a lovely club with... Uh, whereas Cheem's only a single lawn, and Surbiton's got, as you all know, I'm sure, seven lawns, not quite as many as yeah. here, but well, still... They, uh, they can take over the lawn bowls when they have uh, the yeah. Worlds or something. That's yeah. right, yeah. I think they get one, or, or do they get two out of that sometimes? So they might have as many as eight or nine uh, for a big tournament. All right, so Rob has played uh, uh, what might be confounding to uh, new players. He's, he's played to a very difficult running position just to be hidden from Matthew. Matthew still had to go at the, the slight edge of black. Uh, and again, having a tough angle at uh, these odd hoops when the opponents are far away is actually nice because you'd hope to jaws. Um, we might have seen in game one, though, how difficult getting the jaws is on yeah. these uh, these quick-paced lawns. There might be little hills near the hoop, but just any yeah. contact with that stanchion and the ball rebounds so much that it's hard to settle into the jaws. Yeah, no, these hoops are just... Amazing. I mean, as I was saying with, with, with Chris earlier, the Reg managed to miss uh, two Jaws' attempts from about a foot yesterday, which was almost unthinkable. Yeah, it's, uh, it is quite unfortunate when you're hoping to Jaws, not just for future offense, but to block the opponent, and sometimes the ball will bounce back and end up giving the opponent uh, an in-off yeah. possibility if yeah. they are at an angled position. So uh, you have to be very careful going for the Jaws here. Uh, Matthew takes a, a big swipe at black there from 28 yards uh, mm -hmm. just to uh, take away Robert's jawsing effort. I don't think uh, Robert's likely to go through here, but once again, hard to predict with players of this caliber. They, they can make anything look easy. Let's if see. he does manage to jaws this, do you think Blue will try and snuggle red to prevent the jump shot, or...? Well, let's see what happens first, I suppose. The, the snuggle is difficult, because red is uh, an outside agency. Um, it's possible he could snuggle. It's also knowing, having seen Matthew uh, possibly do a, a double jump before. I don't yeah. know if that happened in game one, but, but he might just know, because Rob yeah. is very knowledgeable, where red would land. Yeah. So the block might not necessarily be going all the way six yards to red. It might be going one yard Somewhere in front of black. So, so where the bounce Where would red to be. would have yeah. to land, yeah. yeah. That and that sense. way Matthew has to hit it much harder and, yeah. and play possibly the Egyptian-style jump from the boundary, which is Straight in through. the air the whole yeah. way. <laughs> Um, Those are spectacular, aren't they, when you see them? Uh, uh, very impressive, uh, but yeah. could make your wrists hurt just watching them. Yeah. Uh, you know, the kind of thing that uh, I think might bother either Matt or Rob to hit quite that hard. It's it's oh. not exactly their, their go-to shot. So that's interesting. He doesn't look like he's even tried to lock that from the hoop unless blue yeah. already is it doesn't it looks like that's open isn't it well so again the confounding position of of, of black blue to play, was uh 
was so confounding because he was hiding from Yellow's last shot. Yeah. So now it, it wasn't He's even gone. in a position he liked the jaws, and he worried if he went for the jaws, he might bounce out, give Yellow an in-off. Mm -hmm. So he's played to block to Yellow block that, now, yeah. I assume, hopefully, in a jawsing position, mm -hmm. um, and he would block Red's hoop shot uh, with Blue, even if Matthew were to get a clearance here. This yeah. might also be blocking yeah. uh, Yellow on Blue, so this, yeah, this might not be a jump got, for the hoop, a jump blue, for the I'm clear. Yeah, so the yeah. double jump for the clear, and again, like blocking the double jump on the hoop, mm. Black was almost in the perfect position to block yeah. the bouncing jump shot there yeah. on Blue. Absolutely, and if Blue can now run, Yellow's obviously beyond halfway and therefore offside for the next hoop. Uh, no, Yellow, yellow stopped short. Um, but, oh, did it? So blue, oh, so yeah, it, yeah. it just ended up, yes, of yeah. course, it ended up down here, but obviously it crossed the, across the boundary. Yeah, once, down, yeah, once it becomes an outside agency, yes, uh, it doesn't get to keep its no, position, no. even if it yeah. has a nice bounce off a yes, wall. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes a hill. Oh, good, tough <laughs> angled hoop shot. Came down almost towards corner two here. Mm. Uh, curved a little bit with the spin. Yeah. But he's not more than halfway, but that's certainly close enough for him to protect hoop two. It's yeah. better than dribbling through, of course, as Keeping some of us would on a tough angled hoop shot yeah. on these hoops. Keeping him well controlled. Matthew plays through the gap there. Mind the gap, as I'm told. It's looking quite good. It's looking a bit longer, but... Yeah, he's, he's put it in a threatening position bad, yeah. and a force Rob to hit, but mm. it's not blocking Rob's hoop shot and thus mm. probably unlikely to stress Rob out that he might yeah. hit red into the hoop. You would expect Rob to be able to hit that nine times out of ten from yep. there, wouldn't you? And yep. especially with black as good as that. Yeah, and then that, yeah, red's position really dictated that Rob needed to get closer than red just to ensure he doesn't block blue's clearance. He's gotten closer than red and so tight to the hoop that blue has a lot of room on this north boundary. If it's able to clear red, uh, it is, uh, it's probably got... 10 yards on this yeah. north boundary so where Matthew's, red will be wired from Matthew's black. He's got to go for the clearance and he's not got it. Yeah. That was a long one. He is cross with himself. Yeah. I think that was a nice double target there where if he if he aims on the left half of black, not only does he minimize the risk of peeling black, but if he were to miss on the left, he has the chance of running the hoop. Mm. Having missed on the right, of course, uh, he, he got nothing mm. out of that shot. So he seems to be muttering under his breath, basketball, is that a, a, a I think, term, term of self-abuse well, in North Carolina? Or uh, he, he's a high school basketball player and football player uh, there in North Carolina. Uh, I, I believe that might have been a reference to uh, aiming at the hoop. Yeah. Uh, right. Let's see, he's going for the jump here to see if he can exercise the demons of that last shot. Yes. He really um, loves jumping at that hoop. It's become his favorite jumping hoop. So we see there the, the failure of Rob to uh, to hit and clear red. Mm -hmm. He went for a block, and uh, we wonder if that might change Rob's tactics coming yeah. up, as, as Rob has amazing touch. But even with a block, unless he were within a foot, Matthew yeah. would have still been able to go for yeah. that jump. Yeah, I mean, this week, Rob's been thriving on blocking and people missing, and if your opponent doesn't miss then you do have to rethink your tactics a bit the you? jump shots are harder than a, a shot on the ground there but I, I think we'll see if rob reconsiders blocking in those scenarios when matthew's within five yeah. yards he doesn't need a bouncing jump we've seen it that hoop now twice matthew yeah. has great jump shots from three and no he's not got that uh, that's not his usual from that route from that range he's usually so reliable yeah we'll see we'll see what happens yeah. As Matthew's uh, trying to get in the zone. He's certainly in the zone yeah. with his, his jump shot. Uh, Having yeah. shot with his first, obviously he's got another go at this. First refusal. Three volts. Oh. So missed, missed a fourteen missed yarder and then a sixteen yarder. Mm. One right, one left. So he's he's trying to hone back into the form he had there at the end yeah. of game one, where he yeah. was hitting everything. It's not good for your confidence when you miss two or three in a row, is it? It's, it's, 
as we well, saw with Red yesterday, his confidence seemed to I, I fade as the game went on. The only benefit he might get out of it is it's two misses at one hoop here. But we'll see yes. if it costs him down at hoop four as well yeah. with Rob in such nice position. Um, so in reference to his uh, his basketball uh, reference, uh, Matthew is from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, a rich basketball history. He played basketball, I believe, at... Uh, I'm going to say North Davidson High, and I'm probably going to hear it in the comments from the Nar the Carolinians if I'm wrong. But he played uh, basketball and football and had his knees held out. Uh, he might be on the field somewhere else today. Uh, but at the moment, uh, I guess, thankfully for the croquet world, uh, he was unable to continue his yeah. career at the collegiate level and focused on croquet. Oh, it's just slipped past. Uh, so Rob gets all the way down to defend hoop four, and Matthew yeah. dribbles past wired position, past position at all. Giving can, Rob control of hoop four now. Yeah. You can tell these hoops are get, the, the lawn's getting faster as the week goes on because that the pace with which Robert ran that hoop looked very similar to the kind of pace that was running hoops and leaving them good for the next hoop earlier in the week. Whereas it's it's not gone off the boundary, but it's gone very close to it. Yeah, but you'll find that the, the top players don't fear um, being wired at hoop four yeah. if they run three hard. They would much rather be down a few yards past mm. hoop four than yeah. at peg height because yeah. the clearance from hoop four, if you are south, if you go past hoop four and, yeah. and you're able to have a shot here, the clearance allows him to send yellow a full 28 yards back Absolutely. to the corner three. Yes. Whereas if he had stopped peg high, he might retain a possible hoop shot, but you're very rarely going to be shooting from there. Yeah. And then the clearance only puts the, the yellow mm. ball on the south boundary, you know, seven or 10 yards away from. Yeah. ball in position so uh, i'm sure he prefers to have run past the hoop uh, and of course as we saw from the end of matthew's match yesterday if you have enough pace on your hoop shot through an odd hoop you might get two points uh, and you can't do that if you stop peg high or that even a, in position that was an astonishing shot uh, matthew finished his uh, semi-final wasn't it uh, the one straight I, through straight through hoops nine and ten in the same shot that was you, quite you occasionally see that even you'll see it go curve around the peg sometimes mm. making five and six or eleven and yeah. twelve but uh, I must say, uh, Matthew claims to have never done that before in a game. And what I don't know. What a good if, time to start. I, I, I don't know if I've seen that to end a game with point six and seven. Every now and yeah. then you see somebody make the seventh point and score the eighth unnecessary yeah. point on that shot. But it's, it's, uh, it, yeah. it's quite impressive to do it to end a game, let alone a best of three, let alone a best of five in the semifinal of the world. So uh, probably the best possible time barring today. Uh, for that kind of shot to end the game. So um, we'll see if he can dial that up again later. So he's come interesting at the back of the hoop rather than coming for, forwards of it. And obviously Yellow will now, if he wants to, can clear blue right down to the north boundary. No, he's going for this again. It is, it is a tricky... You can't be going to Jaws at the black uh, there, surely. Rob, yeah, Rob is coming up Red? I've lost track of where scenario. Red even is. It's all right down there by the oh, hoop. Oh, it is there. It was just... <laughs> it was so, hidden behind it. So we couldn't see I it. Think, uh, I think it was possible that Red and Yellow were impeding each other from really mm. getting a clearance on Blue. So Rob knew that all that all Matthew could do was really play a block, and, and the most useful block would have been to Jaws, and that's why Black is in the back, is yeah. to make sure that if Matthew were to Jaws... Uh, Rob had something that could only be cleared to the back or the corner, and he would still have a chance to dislodge a ball from the jaws. Uh, I mean, we know how hard open, it is. It? Yeah, we know how hard it is to get the jaws. It looks like Matthew is trying to play conservative and not hitting the jaws, but he yes. might have gone past, looks... giving Rob a wide target here. Yeah. Ooh. Yes. Oh, did that go through, or did it bounce I, back I, and slide past? Well, him? I'm I'm going to go with our uh, my compatriots on the south boundary not reacting means yeah. it didn't go through almost yeah. almost one of the lightning bolt, you know, off the stanchion off the ball yeah. and had a chance with some spin to get through, so now he's uh, again yeah. the reason Rob didn't set up with black was to avoid a stop shot, um, and to avoid uh, to defend against the jaws, blue having settled there left Matthew a great stop shot where he was able to both uh, knock blue 20 yards away or 18 yards away and hold position. And that position seems to be wired from black. So yeah. doing a lot of work with that shot, uh, which brings up, a, I had a, a call from a compatriot yesterday who wanted clarification as we keep calling these stop shots. Some people call them stun shots. Um, I wanted to ask you, Brian, uh, how do you hit a, a stop shot or a stun shot? Is it your normal swing or do you do you change the swing a little bit when it's nice and close like that? When they're very close together, yeah, I, I do a... Uh... 
a really stop the mallet as soon as it hits the ball. Some people, some people try and just ground it. They tilt it at an angle, don't they, and ground it in. But uh, I tend to. All right. So that applause means he got the block he on did. blue there yeah. from uh, his compatriots there, offering support. That's Sharif Abdul Wahab, uh, Blake Fields, uh, Brian Lozano, Rick Zazueda, and the Fields family, Justin and Janet. So uh, mm -hmm. a little. Uh, North American corner down there, right. supporting it's Matthew on that block club. effort. Yeah. So sorry. Oh, didn't get all of the block though. Great shot by Rob. Might have been quarter ball or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, lucky to not put that through. It looks uh, doable, but it's certainly a lot harder than it was. For sure. Okay, so uh, yeah, part of the conversation about that stun shot is that uh, yeah, when you're close enough to still be accurate, having changed the mm -hmm. swing, yeah. you might change your Ooh. swing in order to get the desired mm -hmm. stun effect. And yeah. you need to hit it hard enough that the ball is not yet spinning yeah. with top spin, yeah. so you need it skipping. So sometimes players will have mm -hmm. less follow through, or as Brian mentioned, no follow through by grounding yeah. the mallet or stopping the mallet. Um, but at a longer distance like this, Rob might have the effect of a center ball clearance, and Absolutely. it kind of looks like yeah. a good stun shot, but Rob was not hitting that hard enough to, to properly stop. Yeah. He probably hit that with his normal swing, normal follow-through. The effect of, of stunning yellow away and black staying nearby was due to just the accuracy. Yeah. Um, but yeah. you'll see these players uh, possibly up to three, five yards mm -hmm. considering hitting the ball slightly differently if they yeah. need that stun effect. Yeah. I, t um, I tend to any anything more than a yard. I'd probably just go for a normalish swing through and try and try and get the stun through actually hitting it completely full ball. Doesn't always happen. Yeah, my my compatriot Russ Dilly uh, had me curious, so I asked Matthew, and he said possibly stepping back a little bit and a half of a follow through, just yeah. shortening the follow through when it gets to be you know a two three yarder. Mm -hmm. You don't want to take so much off; it really changes your yeah. accuracy. But you know it's all a balance uh, when you're looking for a desired effect, especially when you're looking for kind of a, a yeah. two for one shot. Uh, the stun shot Matthew hit at hoop four was close enough. I I imagine he just stopped that with almost yeah. no follow through yeah. and he was able to control red enough to be wired so yeah, now with uh, sure. one missed yeah. hoop uh, we've got a couple of center ball clears there first black on yellow now red on black those again not uh, classic stop shot stun shots just the effect being yeah. um, a center ball clearance with a little bit of top spin that leaves their ball nearby so at the moment we're a succession now of clearances with no one actually gaining a easy opportunity to have a hoop run, so a period of attrition. Yeah, Rob's, Rob's promotion uh, put some pressure there on Matthew's shot. Uh, you know, a, a good promotion there might have left blue on the north side of the hoop as well, but it looks like mm. now blue and black are unmakeable position. Yeah. And yeah, three clears later, we have now had a full reset since Matthew's missed hoop Absolutely, shot. Absolutely, yeah. So you'll see kind of uh, multiple tactical battles playing out at one hoop mm. um, anytime you know, somebody is kind of forcing their opponent into a 16-yard a clearance or, or longer. Mm -hmm. uh, you kind of see that they have they have the advantage in the tactics, but often you get these resets, in this case from a, a missed hoop shot after Robert changed his mm -hmm. hoop shot with that tough 16-yard clearance. So Robert now, seems to thrive on this sort of attritional type stuff, and I think some friends are actually watching here over there today. Shout out to Helen and Andrew if you watch this on the... Um, uh, on the Riku, YouTube Riku, channel, Riku yeah. on the YouTube channel later, um, they Ooh. were commenting that they they came down for the quarterfinals against uh, Ahmed Naza and reckoned that Rob's like attritional play. He got, I think, Ahmed looked like he was getting bored basically, and so started taking on more reckless shots than perhaps he should have done because he was just, oh come on, get this over with. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Rob is, Rob is probably one of the best tactical players in croquet history. Mm. And uh, having focused more on GC recently with the recent Worlds in 2019 and this year here in England, uh, he is... Mm. He's really focused a lot, and, and I believe he even played one of the tournaments earlier this year. Yeah, I'm told he's uh, here been winning Sussex. everything he played. He won, won uh, there was something on the commentary yesterday saying he'd won about the last two or three things he'd entered. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, so obviously he didn't, he didn't, if he, I, I didn't even remember him being in the, the 2019 one, so I don't think he can have gone very far in that. 
but up to now I'd only really, I mean it's interesting, I thought of three of the semi-finalists as being almost entirely AC players. Well, um, Matthew pointed out that the, the four semi-finalists are mm. the top four ranked AC players who entered this event. Indeed. Uh, yeah. Matthew sitting at five or six, depending, uh, yeah. I think Robert Fletcher may not have played ten games in last year, so Matthew's five unless you right. include zero games, which would then mm. show Robert Fletcher. So uh, Robert Reg uh, and uh, Fletcher, Bamford, Fulford, and Essek are in the top five there, I believe, with Patty Chapman. And anyway, so, yeah, I'm, it's, I'm uh, being switched out now. It has been a, a great pleasure to sit with you. And could I ask one parting question before I go, which I want, really wanted to ask was of the young guns, obviously we've got quite a few uh, youngsters here uh, this year. Who, who, great, who has job, impressed Matthew. you most? It's it's hard to say. There there are many great impressive players. Uh, I I'm I'm terribly partial to Blake Fields. <laughs> Doesn't he hit the ball well? <laughs> Quite Fantastic. well. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much again. Absolutely. Ah, nice to meet you, Brian. Be well. And I'm going to introduce Rick Zazueta, uh, Mexico by way of Southern California, also known as you know. Old Mexico. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> Welcome. I love that. I love that. Old Mexico. Not a lot of people know that, that that's what they used to call a region. So just coming into this game, it's tied at 2-2. Two -two. Uh, Matthew is playing red and yellow. So we're very excited to be here. So excited to see, hopefully, you know, without sounding too partial, a new champion. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna, oh great clearance by Matthew. Just ensuring that uh, he, he doesn't get... Uh, if Rob had played a nice block with black, he might have had a lesser shot at Yes. Either. So clearing with the first ball. But yeah, this is exciting. We have a North American commentary duo here. So forgive us if uh, possibly we talk a bit more about uh, our compatriot, Matthew. And, and this uh, is and a Robert clash. Fulford, which a lot have been said about Robert Fulford. So we're going to give Matthew a bit of airtime, of course. <laughs> and, and this is a nice clash of two different styles and the way they're playing two different views and a lot of has been said on this tournament that, that the ac players have really shown up and have really you know taken a hold of this game but you can see matthew's style even though he's a fantastic ac player is not the traditional ac style when it comes to golf croquet he likes being aggressive and if he keeps that aggressivity up you yeah. know it's definitely going to work in his favor um, well, I gotta say, uh, Brian brought that up as well, that he feels like, you know, Rob and Matthew's styles are, are so different. Um, I, I feel like they both have a similar tool set, and, and the idea that Matthew's more aggressive. Uh, I've seen Rob shoot a lot of long hoop shots and playing some amazing, you know, in-offs uh, with his clearances. So while he does do maybe uh, more gentle clearances, Matthew also incorporates those. So maybe he does more gentle clearances than Matthew, but you'll see both of them play... Um, a, a nice clearance game until they're looking at something seven yards or less at an even hoop they you know they might be trying to get within four yards before they have a go at the hoop but uh rob doesn't shy away from a lot of hoop shots so That's you know good. people might be crediting matthew in their aggressive style uh rob rob certainly will get aggressive as necessary um maybe if he if he falls behind as we saw in game one we might see him slow down because you want to try to play for a two hoop advantage there when you're go. behind uh, and if you're if you're able to play with the lead, you can play fast and loose and and go for one hoop at a time, trading hoops because with the lead, you don't have to uh, you don't have to come back by getting multiple hoops in a row. So Matthew plays a little promotion there. He had a great uh, center ball clearance, uh, leaving Red close to the hoop, but he wanted to ensure that Red was a threat to score the hoop here. Uh, and maybe a little farther away. There was a chance if he had promoted red just enough that blue wouldn't have a shot at it. But the half ball promotion left both red and yellow in position, and Rob can only clear red so far. So unless Rob clears and blocks, uh, red was going to have a chance to clear black. That was a nice cut. Leaves blue with a shot at hoop if needed, and, you know, gets rid of puts red in the corner yeah this is this is kind of uh instead of blocking red at black he has cut red to a position where black has a backstop so if if matt's center clears black it might just transfer all that power to yellow leave black in front so possibly the cut was to maximize the distance yeah. and to give yeah. rob a hoop shot but you see there even though matthew got uh the left side of black i believe it still cleared away yellow so rob cutting Matthew over back to hoop four didn't increase the distance a whole lot, but it certainly made Matthew's clearance um, less beneficial. He was he was not able to preserve Yellow's position yeah. and uh, keep control of the hoop really. Yeah, I, and and at this point, 
I really see the attrition factor that's starting to play in Fulford. You can tell it's this player that he just keeps getting better and better as as he goes by, and you know he's performing at a very high level. And that pace, almost that as as when we were saying aggressive, maybe it's the pace that Fulford manages that is a little calmer, and it just kind of takes his time, and it's kind of you know, and if you're able to fall into that game, it could be a very very difficult web of a game that you know he kind of develops. Well, you know, it's a, a battle yesterday probably went, I don't know, nine hours of game time. So it's hard to argue that, uh, that his style was as fast as Matthew. Uh, but that also might have been from Reg. Reg can be a very patient player, playing a lot of blocks, a lot of center clearances. You know, Reg, Reg doesn't always hit as hard as he can. Um, and so it's possible that those battles were prolonged, not just by Robert, but by Reg being accurate and going for similar attrition. And, uh, you know, we see that Matthew doesn't take quite as much time to set up for his shot as Reg. So even if they have similar battles... Oh, good shot. So Matthew's not only cleared Black away, uh, he got a little fortunate there, and his, his relative center ball clearance of Black also moved Black... Uh, yellow, it moved blue back significantly to make the hoop shot more difficult, and he got like triple bonus there. He banged off hoop four to stay even closer to hoop five. That's uh, more than you usually ask for from a ten yard clearance, I imagine. A fantastic, fantastic hoop, and the way it's playing out, because you know two two is so 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 important going into the center into the center hoops. So whoever gets this and gets the first shot, you can be up 4-2, no problem. That's what they both want at this point. Yeah, it can be easier for one player to control a corner hoop just because those sidelines are open, over, only seven yards away. So whoever gets control first can get these big long clearances. The center hoops, uh, you're not able to often clear the ball more than you know, 10, 14 yards from the hoop. It's rare that you're left in a position where you can clear opponent at hoop five all the way to the north boundary where they have a long, you know, possible 20 yard shot. So these battles can last a longer time down the middle. It's also, uh, you know, uh, quite frequently that the player who's able to get five gets six. So a 4-2 lead can disappear or a 2-2 tie can balloon to a 4-2 lead quite quickly. So it's an important battle. And we'll we'll see a test of their mid range, you know, the the ten to fourteen yard clearance. And it's great that you mentioned the mid range because I remember your game, uh, what was that three years ago in twenty nineteen, and that was that was what 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 you did for the win. Your mid game that final was something incredible, and and like you say, it's going to come down to that. That's a bad miss for yeah. Mr. Fulford. So again, I, I, I'd like to point out, you know. Uh, uh, a bit of validation there that, that Rob does not all play for attrition. That wasn't a clearance yes. shot on yellow. He wasn't trying to play gentle in nice and tight with a block on red. He went for it there he on like a five-yarder because, again, these, these clearance battles, you, you might have four or five good clearance shots before you find yourself looking at a hoop shot. And in that case, he thought yellow didn't have an easy hoop shot. He wasn't blocked. And the five-yarder, uh, I'm guessing that was, looked, looked worth it. Uh, an unfortunate it, result. And... Uh, He's cleared the danger ball, but he's the blue banging off the hoop so far away. We're going to see the test of that mid-range game. We're looking at a 13-yarder here, maybe 12-yarder for Robert. Uh, if Matthew's fortunate, uh, uh, there's only a half ball. He might even get a block. No, he's not not venturing. He's with just a block. trying to set just, up and put yeah. the pressure back on Blues here. Yeah. So we can see the control has shifted from Rob setting up and Matthew having to clear. Now Rob having missed that hoop shot, the dynamic shifts to Matthew setting up and Rob having to clear. So you see, like it's kind of a mini break there instead yes. of Rob being control, Matthew's in control. Uh, the benefit was Rob had to go at the hoop. Oh, he's hit it, but uh, it didn't get quite the cut this time. So. Not only does Red still have a hoop shot, Red has that rare opportunity to clear the danger ball to the north half of the court. This is where we might see a test of Rob's long game. If Matthew can clear here, we might be looking at 20 yard clearance for Rob, um, possibly even wired if Matthew rushes this center ball. We'll see the result. So a lot of side Very to side, Ooh, unfortunate kind of bounce there. Uh, maybe fortunate. We'll see. Uh, he's down by six. Didn't get Rob all the way, but he went nice and straight, so it might be so wired. There might be we'll a see, wire uh, there. You guys might have a better view than, than us with Definitely the camera. Definitely an obstruction. Let's see. I could, I could appeal to you in and see if, uh, see if Rob has a shot. Does Rob have a shot? No, it looks like, it looks like Matthew did a great job getting the block. And, and maybe that, uh, I unplanned for the, the red ball to be bouncing a little and, and kind of half jump its way over black that unplanned uh, shot 
that normally would cost him, you know, 20 yards. If he's able to score five, no. red has now progressed down to control six. So Rob had n n no uh, no real kinda... play other than getting back towards hoop five. Oof. He's Ooh, in the jaws. A fortunate roll, but but uh, he does not want to leave Rob that jump shot. He certainly doesn't want red to have to come back. Yes. So yes. Not, not as he hoped for. Uh, both of them having an uncharacteristic miss at hoop five, but maybe because Matthew was closer in, his miss spun back into good position. Yes. Uh, Misses are to be made in croquet, like in any sport. It's it's going to come to the point that who makes less mistakes and let, who lets their mistakes shake them off, who shakes off their mistakes and is able to just get back in the game and focus on making less than your opponent. Sometimes as little as 6 to 8% less does the trick to win a match oh, yeah. it, there you it, go that's the war of attrition right there is you know you're you're competing with great players so if you're both hitting you know 80 90 percent then whoever's at 82 percent versus 89 percent that could be all the difference, that's the difference. That's uh, the difference. so a little bit more accurate there and also you see these hoops because the stanchions rebound you so far it's actually quite difficult uh you know the hoops that we normally play in in, yes. in the states and in, in sand-based courts uh, a 45 degree angle would be easier to jaws than a straight on hoop shot but you can see here from matthew's result that uh some of the time matthew and robert are trying to jaws from an angle if it catches a little bit of hill where they've have a mound around the carrot or if it catches the hoop stanchion itself the ball bounces out and has no chance of the jaws whereas a straight on hoop shot that hits both stanchions if it's the right pace with good follow through as we had with matthews even though they unfortunately missed the hoop he did spin into the jaws it's oddly easier to yes. spin in the jaws yes. from straight on that's the clear all right so he also did not want to see rob try that jump shot he's gonna give rob the uh the very okay. difficult uh, not just a nine and a half yard bouncing bomb, but he's cut it a little. So this would be 11 yard bouncing bomb. I don't know if Rob has this in and his I bag. And I think this is a jump shot that Matthew does want to see Rob take. Not make, but take. Well, yeah, we'll see. Uh, we can't really tell from where we are up in corner two how far into the Jaws yellow is. Again, he missed the hoop, bounced back, and spun in. So it's possible Rob could have a quarter ball here to cut that out or, room. or try to knock it back. It's quite risky, though, because putting yellow through would give Matthew a good chance of controlling six. And Rob has just played down to avoid Matthew Jawsing. Uh, so he... He might have been playing for the block to block Matthew's progression to six or just close enough where red couldn't clear black. It's a great lag shot if he's trying to be wired from red. And that prevents Matthew getting through. Matthew gets all the way through. Two for one. Oh, so again, he's dribbled a little past position, maybe fell into a hole there. He should be able to control six. Uh, now, yesterday we saw some aggressive shooting from Rob and Reg, where you would see one player gets control of a hoop, mm -hmm. the other might go for this hoop shot. So we saw Reg uh, get cleared out of 12 and then shoot 12 from past 11, wow. a good 14-yarder. And we even saw Rob at uh, hoop four once. Um, when Reg had two balls in position at four, Rob made four from less than halfway down from three, a, a good 15-yarder. So we might see a hoop shot here. Yeah, I think I think he's preparing for going for hoop because I call these free shots because he's already there. Yeah. And uh, his opponent's not a threat, so he might as well just take it because if not, he can come back. So, so he gets a free pass at hoop. So you got a pop quiz if you're not loving the hoop shot. What is what is the plan B here? What what would be the alternative plan, Rick? Maybe wired from yellow. Right. So uh, there, yellow's really close to the hoop, so it might be a wide triangle where you could wire, but it's still got to be a really good touch shot. He missed. So he hoop. went for went for the gusto. It's uh, you see these players even even after a miss, they gotta just figure their due. It's uh, yeah. like a great three point shooter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, you know, you might miss a... all game, and at the end of the game, I'm due for one. Coach. Exactly. Exactly. And that there. was a that was a smart play. So again, having missed. I don't think yellow can clear blue at all. He's bounced off to a position that yellow yes. could block blue, but yellow can't do a lot to to make blue's shot longer. Regis. So again, that's the the low risk of taking that hoop shot for Rob. So now is he gonna we'll go see. for it again, or is he gonna clear red? Well, again, the because yellow can't clear blue, the only way red stays protected is with a block. Yeah, you know, red's in a very makeable position for Matthew, but after everybody's missed a couple hoop shots here, he might just leave it be. The problem is going to position just gives yellow a stop shot anything. clearance. Yes. So we might see a clear on red or another hoop shot. It looks like he's looking at the hoop. He's looking at so, the hoop. Yeah. Yes. Hoop shot. 
This one's a little more costly. Oh no, he's cleared yellow. All right. Uh, maybe the camera, maybe everybody has a good camera angle. See if, if that was the intention. I'm going to go ahead and assume it was, as it is Robert Fulford hitting a, a 10 yarder. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and assume his intention was to make sure that yellow didn't get an easy chance at the block on red, or yellow didn't get a really nice wired position from black at one foot in front, putting a lot of pressure on Rob. So Matthew's gone to a, a very makeable hoop position, and I believe the hope is that uh, he didn't want to be so close to red that he hampered his partner or that Rob could move both balls here, because Rob's got still several a clearances bit of a possibility. to come. Yeah, he might be a little close there if, if Rob were to get the right half of red. Um, but I think we're going to see a, a center ball clearance, and then Rob's going to have to trust black to protect against yellow. So, uh, you know, uh, as you may know from uh, my my lessons I've given at Mission Hills, you might have heard trickle down. You know, you have your, your priorities of shoot, hit, interfere, yes, and yes. position. Stephen Looks Morgan like, quotes it. <laughs> there you go. It's the, the ship list. Yes. Uh, uh, and... The enunciation is important. The ship list. I'm going to pop the P on the microphone for emphasis. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Um, so the idea is if you can shoot the hoop, it's the only way to score points. Otherwise, look to hit a ball, look to interfere with a ball, look to position, maybe look to do two or three of those things. So Rob was looking to get interference and position. Uh, I don't think he got either. So a rare touch fail with Rob. He was going for real close to the hoop there. Yeah. Um, and now, oddly, Matthew, having missed the hoop, he bounced into that beneficial position we were talking about, where if you can get cross-wired from a ball that's close to the hoop, then now blue can't clear red. Yes. So that might free him to shoot a hoop shot with yellow, even if Rob moves this ball. And we're in that part of the game where the lawn's starting to be faster, the hoops, they're starting to feel tighter just because the lawn gets so hot and so, so, so um, hard. Right, the you surface must have had so some hard. experience with that in the world teams. Lots you guys had a experience. very dry... Uh, golden courts, we might call them in yes, California. Yes, yes, golden, the golden courts. fields of. Well, yes. Where was that venue again? Yeah. Guilford and Godalming. Guilford and Godalming was a, a fantastic. I love the difficult con conditions, you know, and they they purposely like to get rid of the green because they like it being so fast. So, yeah, it's a, a lot like a golf tournament where they can do that to the lawns for a week or two at a time, uh, and that makes things really tough, as you'll see in uh, PGA events or, or majors where you see good golfers. You know, hill off what would be very makeable mm -hmm. putts because the greens are so fast. You're now seeing uh, really great shooters um, miss shots that they would normally make yes. nine out of ten. Yes. And and again, that's a, a credit to uh, the the turf care people here that have maintained great lawns and really sped them up. Uh, also, a bit lucky with the weather. We had yes. very little rain, maybe yes. a little bit of clouds and and moisture, but but no real downfall this week. Um, from the skies, so it's allowed things to speed up. And these last couple days being sunny and breezy is just drying it out more. Uh, somebody who would know a lot about that, Jonathan Essex, uh, Matthew Essex's father, does a lot of turf care and maintaining of uh, the croquet lawn where um, Matthew played a lot of his youth, uh, Steve Summers Croquet Lawn. They're playing with Danny Honeycutt in North Carolina, yeah. uh, learning croquet, uh, playing backyard. Very knowledgeable The Bexter, people. hello to the Bexter, and, and Casper, Matthew's grandparents who played. So, uh, you know, John will tell you it's, it's the wind as well as the sun are both, they're working double time. They're working together to dry this out. So we've had a couple of misses, a little bit of a reset. We saw Rob take relief from a hole. Uh, again, that is a thing that players are, are very used to just allowing each other to do. It might, might be contentious at an intermediate level, but at the top level, everybody knows that you're not trying to get an advantage. You're just trying to avoid what has become uh, you know, probably an old hoop hole, uh, something that isn't supposed to affect the game. So what's going on here? Blue is apparently might be a slightly blocked from red, or he was looking at it. It might not be. So if... Oh, it looks like looks like he's open enough that, that Matthew still wants to clear those balls. I'm going to clear blue, which plays next, to ensure that uh, Rob's got to hit a tough Very shot. nice. All right, so I want to talk about the future of the game. That shot right there, what you saw, I think is the future of the game. When you hit a clearance hard enough, uh, so we hit just right of center, it might have been because of the hole, but this happens without holes. The ball will bounce when you hit it hard enough. And you saw there, yellow went right over the top of black. Mm -hmm. and in this case, maybe fortunate that he didn't promote black to the front sight. Maybe unfortunate, as he might have sent black away and yellow might have stayed in front of the hoop. But that shot could be used 
in a very contentious late game hoop to jump a ball that is jawsed from a non-jumping position. Yes. So if you imagine those balls were moved back and that was hoop 11, black in the jaws and blew a foot away, Yes. Uh, a 10 yard clearance from over here near corner two could hit the ball not in the jaws. And if it catches the air just right, mm -hmm. instead of hopping over black, in this case, you know, to, uh, you know, towards the sideline, it could have hopped over black through a hoop. Yeah. Um, now, you have to be able to hit hard enough. Uh, I'd say that's probably like the future of uh, somebody playing in an Egyptian pace. But you saw even Matthew I've seen it with happen a on accident shot. where people do those kind of things yeah. once. I've, I've seen it happen on accident. It's, it's a low odds yes, uh, shot, yes. so it would probably have to be desperation. You're you're down 6-4. But uh, I'm going to leave you all with that, my vision of the future of the game. And uh, Thank you so much for this opportunity to spend some time behind the mic watching this fantastic yeah. match next to the champ himself, Ben Rothman. Thank we're, you. We're bringing in uh, Nelson Morrow, uh, one of uh, the world's favorite commentators, <laughs> and Tim King, tournament director. Uh, so thank you all for your work, gentlemen. Thank you for having us, and hopefully we'll talk to you later. Oh, good afternoon, Tim. Well, yes, Nelson. What a well, what... even good morning, actually. Oh, uh, just just uh, just the right side of midday, aren't we? Still, yeah, but yes. Uh, what a, what a glorious setting oh, we've got today. We have had a magnificent week, actually. You know, in terms of the tournament and the weather, it's uh, the English. It's been it's been an absolutely stunning English week. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. It, it, I mean, it really doesn't almost feel English, does it? The uh, the courts have become very straw coloured in places. Yeah, and. Uh, we know how much the players, I think, have uh, enjoyed the challenge of playing on that, that sort of difficulty of court. Yeah, they've certainly quickened as the week's gone on. I mean, they're a little slow at the beginning of the tournament, but uh, in the, in, since the knockout stage, they certainly have got a lot more testing. Mm. Yeah. So what's your thoughts so far in terms of how um, Well, they... I, I, I've, my money, um, it really depended on how... Um, Matthew was always going to be, I think, play aggressively, and it, which yeah. he has has done, and it just depended on his accuracy. And as you saw, I think in the first game, his accuracy was mm. magnificent. You mm -hmm. know, yeah, uh, he hardly missed a ball, he hardly missed a hoop. Um, his clearing was superb, yeah. and I think that is the the difference in in the way that the semi-finals played between Reg and Robert. Yeah, they both played a very similar type of game. Yeah, I think. Robert slightly dictated the game and Ridge yes. uh, perhaps got a little, uh, um, uh, went into Robert's game more, more yeah. than his own game. Yeah, that, that was Where, my feeling towards the end. Of, yeah. It looked, Reg didn't look like normal Reg. No, he, he whereas, was, whereas Matthew yeah. was playing his game. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's your feeling? I mean, we've obviously just seen uh, Matthew blob a couple of attempts at hoop six. Uh, is that just that natural... You know, none of us play perfectly for, for well, more he, than a he period. Well, he missed one at four, but he, I think he was perhaps, his mindset was he was going to actually run it from a different place. Right. Um, Robert hit the ball, it bounced back into another position, and I think he actually, his mindset was still somewhere else, and he perhaps didn't take enough time to reset himself to take that shot, you know, and therefore failed it. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a really in interesting observation, and that's a great clearance. Great clearance from, uh, from him. Yeah. Yeah, I, I suppose you, I don't know if other people have commented, but uh, Matthew is very unique that he plays Irish grip for his soft shots. So that's the one with the hands pointing down, down isn't yep. it? Yeah. Uh, and then he plays a Solomon grip, which is the two hands touched together at the top for his clearing and also for his jumping. You know? yes. and there's not many players who who change their grips so dramatically no. for, 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 for playing the same kind of That's shot. right. People mm. people do uh, move their hands up and down the mallet yep. often, but not, not sort of swap them all the way around. I mean, there are a few players now who play Irish who do uh, use a sauna for a jump shot, for a long okay. jump shot. Yep. But that's... You know, that's understandable. But yep. Matthew is quite unique in the way he, he changes quite uh, easily from one grip to another. You know? Yeah. He's quite unique. And, of course, with the, the other sort of minor coincidence that here we are, uh, court one at uh, at Southwick, Sussex County Croquet Club, is the John Solomon uh, Lord, Lord, which absolutely. is named after uh, John, who uh, f made that particular grip famous. Yep, probably one of the greatest um, AC players uh, the, the sports ever known. Uh, I've never heard 
any stories as to whether John uh, played any GC? Of course, back in the day, it, it was a quite a different game and was perhaps more of a, a sort of recreational version. It was, yeah, yeah. And by the time the the Egyptians came along and, and really changed the game, he yeah. was sort of really past yeah. his past his best. Mm. So here we are, Matthew yeah. running yeah, through six. six very smoothly, and, and that's four out. two. Four two. So how have you enjoyed your week? Oh, it's been fantastic. I, I, I loved it. You know, it's been. Uh, I came here with not much expectations, and I certainly felt I played better than I expected. And uh, it's been an enjoyable tournament. It's always great to catch up with people you've known for many years. Yes. Uh, and now that I'm relocated to New Zealand, I don't see many of these people so much. Yeah. So it's been really, nice, really, really nice to see them again. Yes, it's um, it's definitely fun for for us seeing you back here. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> your your previous split existence. It was yes. generally about. Six months? No, no, it was or... really about four months. It was okay. eight months here. Right, yeah. yeah. And uh, you, you were very I mean, much... Eight, a... sorry. Yeah, on. eight months here and four months in yeah. New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. sorry. And um, you were very much a stalwart of the uh, of the English tournament circuit when I first started to play. And uh, uh, I guess you kind of feel like me that uh, over the past 15 years, we've, we've really seen GC becoming oh. a game that's playing at a, such a high level now. Absolutely. I mean, I was more of a... G a, a AC player yeah. and really came to GC by default in a way and uh, but uh, once I got into it um, I uh, thoroughly enjoyed both games you know yeah. I, you, you you appreciate the two games for different reasons yeah. uh, I always feel it's a I hate hearing the argument you know where people ask you which is the best game you know yeah. uh, I, I think they both have their merits and both have their enjoyment levels of course so what we've seen here is um three good approaches with uh blue red and then black um and matthew has cleared the blue from what would have been yep. a, an easy running situation but yellow is quite a way down uh the court towards uh hoop eight which means it's uh not close by so if uh, rob can now make this clearance with blue i think uh, that begins to give him control of this hoop. absolutely it's what often happens on these corner corner hoops that you know the clearances are, are aren't so great and, unless you can get on the boundary That's and right. clearing yeah. back um that wasn't the best of clearances he would rather have had that a full full ball and, and well, red being where blue was <laughs> exactly yeah that's right yeah almost uh, but then we've all been there and, and, we have. and made that mistake <laughs> ourselves. Um, I don't know how much this has been talked about uh, so far this week, but uh, we also, of course, uh, the big hole, arguably, in this year's tournament, unfortunately, has been the, the younger New Zealanders. That's right. I mean, people, I have, have, was asked on a previous occasion when I was commentating um, what the reason for that is. Um, I think it's two or three reasons. One, money. And it's quite expensive to come all that way from New Zealand. Yep. Two, a lot of our younger players have now got to a university stage right. or just starting jobs. Yep. And so they've had to concentrate on that. They're in term time. Yep. And, and and three, um, obviously COVID has, has yep. had a big effect on, on yep. um, New Zealand borders being closed. And I think another, and obviously another reason is the McRobinson Shield yes. uh, is on in November in Australia, right. and two of our younger players, um, Edmund Fordyce and Felix Webby, are both playing in that, so they couldn't really afford to take the time to come to this. Which really comes back to um, the conversation we were just having about this uh, complementarity now of playing the, both games at the, at the top level. Matthew, of course, uh, already appeared in a, an AC World Championship final, and here he is now in a GC one. Yep. You know, um, all, all these four players are all top AC players, yeah. you know. Um, and it's it's really exciting for me to see, you know, the generation represented by Matthew, of course, Ben in in the uh, this final three years ago from the US. Your your young New Zealanders who yep. are, are all, uh, so many uh, very good players um and then and then it, you know a few uh young english players yeah uh, the spanish of course as well so yes I think... uh, uh, talking about english players um you may like to know that uh, aston wade has won the plate uh, he has yes. and uh and he ran away fairly comfortably in the second game there it was a bit of a tighter battle in the first against ian burridge of course representing wales and is also our uh, world croquet federation president so 
I'm sure he was looking forward to uh, to receiving a uh, trophy himself as well as giving them to the other players. Uh, Absolutely. Later today. Mm. It would be interesting to know what sort of numbers we, we've got on streaming. I know that yesterday they were, we were hitting 350 at one stage. That's, um, that's fantastic. And mm. you, you're trying to make me feel nervous now. <laughs> so I thought I was just talking to you. <laughs> I don't know. If, uh, we can get an update on what we've got, uh, what numbers we've got. But I know I've had comments from, from New Zealand when I've been commentating. And uh, it's been uh, great that they're uh, watching from down there. I have to say, Alison. Morn has done a magnificent job in organising the streaming. She's been here you know, at the crack of dawn every day, and uh, uh, and uh, with also a two and a half year old to deal with as well. Absolutely. So she's been she's been fantastic. Yeah, Ben, and, ben has been one of the uh, one of the stars in, in the background <laughs> there. He uh, most toddlers I know of, of that age are, are known to uh, to have the odd occasional screaming fit, and he has not had one all week. So that certainly helped his mum do a fantastic job and. Mm. Uh, yeah, if I do put my my hat on as tournament director, it's it's definitely an opportunity uh, to point out that uh, we have just had a fantastic team here all week. Um, uh, you know, it, it is everything from the moment you're greeted by by car park attendants. Um, we're very lucky to to borrow uh, the the field from the. Uh, and I'm going to get this wrong, aren't I? I always get confused. There's, there's, uh, is it Shoreham College? Shoreham College, uh, I think. Um, and, um, but, but of course they've got certain rules about where they want the cars parked. So this means somebody has to spend the day there doing that. Um, and then all the way through, of course, to a welcoming desk, all the way through to all the catering we've had. And there are just so many names that it's, it's going to be impossible to remember everybody. Um, but of course. All of us involved in croquet, you know, we're not here for money, which is, is one of the really interesting parts of the sport. And we all get our own satisfaction from knowing that ultimately the uh, the week pinnacles with this fantastic final yeah. uh, and two great players showing us how to play the game at, at the highest level. So I imagine he, he, I don't know whether he can see, I think he can just see blue. And he's right close up there against yes, the, the one's the holding the, the netting back a little bit for yeah. him because he has quite a high swing. Yeah, and it's coming it's through. It's coming yeah, through. It's oh, and he just caught the black. Yeah. He probably, he, I mean, he, he would, I don't think, he, he may have had the, all the ball, but he certainly couldn't get to the other side of, no. of the blue. Yeah, that's so, right. So if he, and, if he had hit yeah. that blue, it would have been coming and, and some, fairly straight. And sometimes when the ball is that close, they work like magnets, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as you, I'm sure you've experienced and so have I, you know. Indeed. So and, what, and, have you, and have you have enjoyed the, your role? Have you had any, any difficulties or has it been fairly smooth uh, sailing? So life would be very boring if there weren't one or two things that needed to be you know fixed essentially but uh, it really the number of those things has been very very small and, and it's really given me the opportunity to uh, make sure morale has been kept high yeah, lo lovely hoop lovely by Rob. Shot yeah. from Rob right so that makes 4-3 to Matthew mm -hmm. um, and you know and uh, I'm sure the weather has helped keep everybody in good spirits yeah but, absolutely uh, the the players have all been uh, totally cooperative. Uh, we, you know, communication, I think, is, is one of the big lessons for me from any anything like this. And um, we've tried our best to communicate. And, of course, the streaming that we're doing now is, is another level, level of that. Level, yeah. Well, it's just, it's like, you know, Crokey Scores came along sort of 10 years ago. That, that was a great addition to, yeah. to the sport. And now with the live streaming we're getting in in, in the UK, we're getting it in, in New Zealand, Australia, is, is making the, the, the sport more widely um, publicised yeah. and, 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 and that is really can only do good. Yeah, no, absolutely. So yeah, so, so Alison has organised all of this, so I've been able to just let her get on with that. You know, if I then end up making a cup, occasional cup of tea just to keep the morale up, that's, that's uh, generally been my role. We've, we've had to, to take one or two decisions and, you know, it's it, potentially, of course, none of us like change. So sometimes you, you lay out a general idea as to how the week's going to be scheduled. And then when you get closer to uh, that 
particular event, you then begin to realise that something. Oh, perhaps, yep. Yeah, nicely done. Rugby at rugby oh. did not as perhaps as well as he would have hoped, but at least he's got that clearance. You know. Yeah. Mm. Yes, I mean, as you say, that you're always going to have issues. Things are also going to change, but it was that always is the mark of a very good manager, who has that flexibility and and can change things as as the tournament goes on because of conditions, weather yeah. conditions, etc. Mm. So, and that, of course, is uh, an important word you've used there. So, so of course, we have myself in the role of tournament director, but then we have a tournament manager, and that's Mike Town, uh, who is very experienced uh, in managing, and he managed this event uh, three years ago. So, Mike is really the one who's got all of the spreadsheets. He's the one that does most of the uh, coordination to make sure croquet scores is up to date, etc. Um, and he's the one that's doing 12 plus hours a day. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and I have done that in the past. And mm -hmm. uh, there comes a point in the week where yeah. you, the, the, the numbers begin to swim a bit in front yeah, yeah. of your eyes. But he's done a fantastic job, as you say. Yeah. I mean, I've managed many tournaments myself in the past, and I know what a, a, a thankless job it is, really. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> And again, if we uh, if we were all doing it for the big bucks, yeah. uh, it, it, uh, it would be a different thing. But um, oh, of course, it's the satisfaction of, of yep. knowing that without somebody in that role, you don't end up with, with the right two people in the final like we have today. Right. And also, you're, you're giving something back to the sport, you yeah. know, and, and that also um, has some satisfaction. Yeah. So here we are now with Matthew with a yep. simple yep. hoop eight to go 5-3 five, five, three three. up. Yep. So it's interesting, isn't it? It seems to me that, that the final is is beginning to be a little bit more like a uh, a traditional GC match. I felt yeah. yesterday in the semi final, uh, we uh, we had some some Rob and Reg changing each other's play. Yes, Nelson, it did. yes, that I was think, very nice to talk think, to you. Uh, well, and, I, and we're going to have uh, two ex world champions are going to take over in, in the guise of uh, Robert Fletcher and Reg Hampton. Thank you. Thank you all. Hi, Robert. Morning, Reg. That will be a very tough act to follow. We had Tim King, who's tournament director, and Nelson Moreau, you know, legend of the game. So you could say that we're following the, the king and queen of croquet. I think you could say that. Definitely a tough, tough act to follow. Yes, it is. So, right, Sir Robert, I've, I've just, I've just arrived and joined in. Could you just give me a quick summary of what you've, what you've seen so far of the play? Yeah. So, so I arrived um, at the uh, start of game two. Uh, okay. Matthew had uh, just won the first game, uh, seven three, I believe. Um, and by all reports, um, Matthew is playing his uh, trademark croquet. Of, uh, <laughs> so what is that? Running, of... running two hoops in one shot, right? <laughs> <laughs> or should we not go there? <laughs> Let's not go there. Rich. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, Matthew's got a very aggressive brand of. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he's also a very accurate um, player, which uh, means that uh, that aggressive brand uh, pays off very well. And and what do you think this match will come down to? Because they because they both got considerable skills. They I mean they're both masters of this game. What do you think it's going to come down to? One or one or one or one or two moments, or is it? Something about their strategy or their headspace. What do you think it'll this verse will come down to? Oh, look, I, I think because um, uh, Robert um, uh, it's, it, in the first game um, it really didn't make any errors. Um, so obviously both players are, are playing very well. So I think it's going to come down to um, you know the kind of. Uh, mental toughness you need in uh, mm. in these matches being the final match of the week um neither player have won this competition before yeah um, yeah which i so, think will be a big factor yeah so it's it's kind of in your experience 
for, 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 for both players at, uh, at this code anyway. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, whoever's going to um, yeah. really um, show that uh, mental toughness throughout the match and play their brand uh, for the uh, duration. So there's a, a very good book uh, by Dr. Bob Rotella, and he works with quite a lot of the top uh, golfers. Uh, called your 15th club. Now, of course, if you are a golfer, you'll know that you're only allowed to have 14 clubs in your bag. So he references, you know, the 15th club being your, your mindset. And he always sort of talks about Amen Corner on the, on the Sunday afternoon at the Masters. And if you are a player who's not who's not won it before, he says that's a very key moment because it's all about one's mindset and and you know, strength of character and can you keep your nerve and you know the way that you think and i i actually think that you reference a really good good point there you, you know both of these players are obviously keen to win this but but it's for the first time and it's probably fair to say across the code so they so they're both very accomplished ac players rob has won five world ac titles um matt obviously got to the final last time around yes uh dare i say that he 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 beat you in the semi did he probably very sorry to mention this <laughs> <laughs> oh did he oh yes yes, yes, yes he did. Did. Yeah. i thought i'd forgotten that one, yeah, no. it's you know the two of us are sitting here smarting because we both lost in the semis yesterday <laughs> so we're both commiserating each other here <laughs> Oh dear. But, but yeah, it's been the first time at, at, at anything, um, you know, like uh, that's why it's really important to have a disciplined uh, uh, mindset. Um, yeah. So that, uh, you know, when those new kind of thoughts do uh, maybe pop into your head that, um, that uh, maybe you haven't... Uh, had in there before um, that you're able to kind of uh, dispatch those and yeah um, yeah you know re reinforce your um, uh, your kind of po po positive uh, discipline mind mindset and tell me Robert is that something that you that you think about or you work at or do you or do you feel that it's come naturally to you um, de def definitely worked at it uh, for, for sure look I think um, uh, I, I think, yeah, d had some parts of it naturally, um, but certainly not the um, the the complete. Um, uh, it's like anything. So, um, a player may have um, quite a lot of uh, natural talent for maybe hitting the ball straight, um, but uh, they have to then go to the club and really hone their skills if they want to be able to you know, yep. compete here. Yeah. Yep. And it's exactly the same yeah. when it comes to uh, one's uh, mental space. Yeah. Okay, just a quick recap. There was a round of applause there. So we're looking at 5-4 to, uh, yeah, to, to Matt. Matthew. So yeah. he's game up and 5-4 up. So he certainly got the advantage. And Rob, Rob really didn't get, get far up. I think he'd probably be quite disappointed with that. Uh, at, um, Quite often, when one plays uh, in Egypt, you'll see them smash through those, mm. and they're and they're thinking, no, that's that's gone too far, um, and their thinking is they would much rather be playing their big clearances from the north boundary um, than playing back towards, you know, the corner. Uh, so I think you'd see very few Egyptians take on the shot that Rob had just played there, which was that sort of uh, mid-paced one. You know, that said, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen Rob smash a croquet ball. Uh, I don't even yeah. think he's got that in his arsenal, has he? <laughs> yeah, he always um, plays with that sort of mid-tempo yeah, pace, doesn't he? He does. Um, and look, he's a uh, he's obviously a great hoop runner, um, and kind of backs himself to say, okay, because because if he can play um, as he just did there, play black, um, you know, kind of up near red or where red or yellow is, it's a very powerful you know yeah, position yeah. to be in. Yeah. 
Um, but you do have to be obviously a very good hoop runner and, yeah. uh, and have that kind of natural, um, uh, either be able to adjust your pace without affecting uh, your uh, natural swing or yeah. Yeah. Um, kind of that be your uh, normal pace that you hit out anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so, so I'm just I'm just tempted to put a ball right in front, not yeah, yeah. There we go. So you've right, so you've had um, twenty four hours, Ma, and you've had a the chance to sleep on it. What 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 sort of thoughts have you had on your your game against Matt? Could you have approached it differently or done things differently other other than of course the sort of actual shot making but you know do, do you think there was something in the in the tactics or the strategy or the sort of gameplay that you would have liked to have changed if you if you if you could have um yeah um i think i, I don't think i would have changed it um from oh, it, oh, i think he's going for a snuggle i think so uh, he's hit it too hard. Oh, yeah, bit that, hard. Was, that was a tough snuggle, wasn't it? it from was, it from, was. from five yards, indeed, <laughs> on a really court. Gone. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, I don't think I would have changed anything, kind of okay. tactically or strategically. Um, it, but there were some key areas that I was uh, kind of failing in with. Uh, uh, my positional play wasn't as good as it um, right. should uh, needed to be, um, and also. Uh, kind of my, fi uh, kind of fifteen yard plus clearances yeah. weren't as weren't as, uh, weren't as clean as, as well, yeah. yeah as clean as they needed to be. And and if right if you could have waved a wand in terms of one's preparation, mm -hmm. okay, because I sort of sense that you know that's um, something that you would have would, would obviously struggled with because it's a you know, you've come a long way. There's, there's obviously a, a lot of jet lag. Your, you know, your flight over here took, you know, thirty-two hours or whatever it was. Um, do you find that if you're in the groove and you've and you've played several tournaments beforehand, that you, uh, right, you do tend to play much better in those sort of circumstances? Um, yeah, absolutely, um, for sure. Like, uh, kind of, <laughs> the, the first uh, first few days here. Um, uh, yeah, it, it just, it, it, I guess the first day I was kind of just grooving my swing. Um, and then after that, trying to adjust to, um, you know, what I needed to be doing uh, tactically and um, strategically. Um, yeah. And then trying to, to get into the zone uh, as, as as best as possible, um, which with little preparation yeah, can tough, be... Yeah, tough, isn't it? Yeah, it can be tough. Yeah. So, so here, so here's a question for you. So Matt, Matt uses two completely different grips. Yeah. For, for single ball shots. Now I, I'm fascinated by that because <laughs> I think it's bad enough trying to, trying to perfect one, <laughs> but to try and perfect two. So what 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 is your thought on that? Because he. Because he, because he plays some shots with an Irish and some shots with a Solomon, and they're two. Uh, I mean, I I can't play with either of those two groups. I think I, I think they're impossible. <laughs> but to try and to try and play great croquet with both groups, please could you explain that to me? Well, I, I definitely don't recommend it. Um, no, I, 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 until, no, I, I wouldn't because it, there's no have it's seen, no coaching manual, is it? No, no, but but I have seen players um, try it before, um, and I guess um, the biggest issue with it is um, okay. So if you decide, um, or how you, how do you decide when you're going to play one yes. group or another? Yes, is it based on how hard you're going to hit the shot? You know, whether it's a touch shot or whether it's a power shot. Yes, or is it based on length? So, okay, am I going to hit with Irish um, seven yes. yards and under? Um, and beyond that, I'm going to hit with, with Solomon. Um, so, um, yeah. and, and, and the issue I've seen with players previously is that 
they're just not sure about when they're going to make that transition. So when it comes to kind of a pressure situation in a match, they're not sure which one they should be playing. Yeah. But yeah. with Matthew, I've never seen that. He's always certain about uh, when he dresses the ball, which which group he's going to be using. Yeah. Um, and I've never seen it be, be an issue for him. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but I, I do think he's the exception to the rule. <laughs> I, <laughs> yes. Um, I suppose my question is because when you try and groove a swing, you've you you you, you, you right, you sort of groove the muscles and you groove the memory with a particular grip, and those two grips and swings must feel very different. So I, I, I'm I'm very curious. Here. So um, several days ago, I was watching um, Sharif play, and Sharif's uh, touch shots. We played with with one hand. Really, one hand. One hand. Wow. And he was quite good. I mean, imagine how good he'd be with two hands. <laughs> he'd be twice as good. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's so that is a good yeah, shot. It's a very strong position. So just a quick recap because we are actually commentating on the world's final. So we so we do have to talk about this game. It's six four to Matt. And I would be taking this clearance. I don't know about you. Yeah, I think he's got a much better. He's, he's got a good. Yeah, that's a oh, great he's played a great shot. He's in the guts. Yeah. I have to say, he's he's showing great composure. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, particularly taking on that line of play with with the hoops being firm in the ground as well. So yeah, mm -hmm. um, a, a good centre ball um, as he had there. He's going to see the ball come flying out. God, I've got to say, Rob's Rob's positional play in the in the sort of half an hour that I've watched him is is it wasn't what he was doing yesterday. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Do you think this is a, this is going to be a, a little dribble or? I think he's going to go out firm. No, oh, quite fit. He's got a bad result there. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, he's, he's near been, wire. Near wire. Yeah, that's all. That, that is the last side. spot to be here. Huh? Near wire spits you out ten yards to the east. But that gives the ascendancy back to. Rob, but again, he doesn't. You know, he doesn't have two balls in front. That 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 black was played in from, from, was it twelve yards away? I mean, is yeah. it just sort of yard and a half past? Uh, uh, yeah, um, um, it, um, I did played on this lawn once during the uh, competition. It was just a single match uh, t to qualify, would you believe, for the uh, for the knockout? Um, uh, you know, in the playoff. Um, that's a great shot, yeah. but it's going to be cleared. Yeah, I think Red's got a good view of that. It's good, yeah, but he's forcing uh, red to clear, and it's going to end up on the far boundary, so or side boundary. I suspect so both balls will end up on the boundary after the shot. This is good. This is a yep. So, so, so clearly he plays with a Solomon grip when he wants to hit the ball hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, as far as I can tell, it's it's. Based on pace, so okay. If, if he's going to be going hard, yeah, with yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if yeah. he's going to be going kind of mid pace to to soft to kind of top touch shots, yeah. um, then it's Irish. Okay, so so this is a this is, so this looks like a little dribble into the jaws again. Yeah, which are, which are tough because he's a yeah. he's a roly lawns, a brittle hoops. Yeah. He's probably got a bit lucky there. So. When you uh, start a match, right? We've got you know five or ten minutes of practice. So what would what would you do to to find the pace of the lawn? Do you go through any particular exercises or shot routines? Yeah, I, I do. So um, you know, so I'd start in, uh, uh, in 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 corner four, but play play across to to hoop one. Um, Obviously, that's going to be the your, your first positional shot, um, and then I'll just play around uh, all, all, all the hoops just so that I can see um, whether there are any major um, uh, deviations. Yeah. Um, and I think most importantly, um, playing a couple of shots from south of uh, hoop twelve um, up to thirteen. Um, okay. Yeah, and just uh, 
because if you do get uh, into a six all position, um, that that shot up to yeah, is pretty to crucial. Needs to be, yeah, needs to be spot on. Yeah. Right, and do you try and get a measure of the lawn in terms of its plumber's speed, or do you just have a sort of innate sense of what that court's going to do for you? Yeah, I'm more more of an innate sense of okay. what it's going to do for me. So, um, it, it, if it's evenly paced, um, it, it can be quite nice. Um, you just hit across one stretch of lawn, and the rest of the lawn's the same. Yeah. Um, but uh, this time of year, you know, with not much rain, you often get some uh, quicker well, patches around well, some of the hoops. Well, you, well, you, well, out. you, of course, were playing on court two, and. You know, Court 2's got that sort of jungle area down under, down in the south boundary. It's lush and green, mm. and it's a whole bunch lower than it is up here, up here on the north boundary, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, I sus and I suspect that these guys are, uh, are, are, much, are much the same, aren't they? He's yeah. put a good, good ball in there, and that could even yeah, be a block. That's a great shot. Yeah. Great shot, Matt. Um, yeah, I, I think there's also a bit of a slope to the, the lawn as well. Um, so I think... From memory, it uh, falls of, uh, kind of towards us a little bit, yep. so that might explain why. Yeah. When Rob was playing into eleven just now. Yeah. Um, it's it's just a run bit on the yeah. 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 So this is this is a reasonably crucial moment in this match. I'd say that Rob has got the advantage on this hoop that is obviously six five down, so he's gonna have to craft something. Um when when you when you're in this position, do you like to try and engineer something where you can either get the flick up to thirteen or some sort of promotion or a rush, or do you just say, Well, I'm 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 playing second up to hoop thirteen and that's that's just it. Um I, I, I think at the, at this level, you don't really have the option of unless there's an errant shot from your opponent um, where they might leave it. Say, had uh, yellow been north of uh, of black, um, then there'd be the option for the the, the week off. But you, I, I just don't feel like you can yeah. try and uh, I suppose mess around too much yeah. at, at twelve. You've really got to take your first opportunity to run the hoop, um, yeah. and if that means you can. Uh, you get lucky and you're able to get a bit of a wick or set up a bit of a rush, then yep. so be it. But yep. Yep. otherwise, um, I'm just assuming I was across the face of that uh, that hoop. That, yeah. Rob, that was a that wasn't more than four or five inches wide. But uh, I mean, I suppose that is a good shot. Yeah. So I, I guess in answer to the, to your question, um, uh, I'm assuming I'm going to be second. To, to okay. To right. Point. Ooh. Not a bad result. It's actually not a bad result. Runs. So we've so we've so we've just been talking about the little flick off that opponent ball at hoop twelve to get you up to thirteen. Do you think Rob Rob turns this down now? I think so. Two balls at um at yep. uh, a twelve here. Yep. He's in full control. Um So just making sure that yellow doesn't have well, I actually think yellow's on the on the right on the midpoint of the um, uh, the north boundary, isn't he? Yeah. So I I I, I think he's completely snookered there. Yeah. Now, uh, I, Matt, Matthew um, is a danger here. Of, uh, Matthew's doing some sort of jump. Yeah. Goodness gracious, is he is he jumping over hoop one? I believe so. Wow. It's a big shot. Mm -hmm. He's gonna have to It's a great attempt. Well, great I think attempt. it was online at all pretty close, but uh just uh the height that he needed to, to get yeah. to get over one um und undid that shot in the end. So th so there have been a series of misses now. Yeah, and so uh, I, I, I probably just would have played um red in myself, um just to Stopped Rob, um, Rob from uh, setting up any any sort of well, promotion. That's exactly what I was thinking because 
he's got two balls right near hoop 12. You've now got a bit of scope for a bit of shenanigans down there. Yeah. Where you can do a little promotion or a rush or... Um, and... Uh, And Rob is uh, obviously so, so, an extremely good AC player. So, so if given a rush to uh, yeah. to thirteen, that's going to be uh, so. If a bit lethal, yeah, yeah. So, so he's so he has so he has put black on the uh, the west side of that hoop, and he presumably is going to try. Uh, Try and run that hoop by a sort of foot or two, and should then give Black the rush back up. I mean, you you, you you're yeah, flirting with danger here. You could run into Black. You could jaw. You could just dribble through. Yeah, um, I think yeah. The 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 con the fear would be that you just dribble through. Um, so so but, but so might you might you try and jaws from there. I think it'll depend where where yellow uh, finishes. Okay. Um, with yellow on the south boundary, mm. drawsing. No, 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 no. Okay, okay that, that, that would obviously rule out. I think I think he's yeah. playing some sort of hard shot because he's got his Solomon grip, playing on the John Solomon lawn with a Solomon grip. And it's hard. And it was. Mm. He well, he uh, he seemed to like that, but uh, that's quite curious because yeah. because I could have sworn that was right on that spot. Yeah. Same here. If anything, maybe just this side of it. So yeah. I thought it would have been um, kind of well, a westerly, um, you know, miss of six rather than a, oh, sorry, of 11 rather than a, a uh, easterly. Oh, he's actually played a good shot. He has. He, <laughs> you've got to give some credit to this guy, right? Because he's played this game before, hasn't he? <laughs> hey? <laughs> that was a great shot. That's a great shot. A great shot. A great shot. Uh, Tilly, you you don't you don't you don't write off Mr. Fulford. Eh? Resilient, just, and he always seems to be very very calm. Okay, but personally, I, I would measure this in directly in line with that hoop, but not slightly to the side. I, I'd like to give myself every inch. Yeah, uh, that looks that looks very good, doesn't it? That's very nice. That's very good. Yeah, that's three foot, pretty much, pretty much in front, and and that's why Rob that put so why, much effort into yeah. to getting the generating this uh, this rush. Uh, but Robert, I think I think blue might be just a bit too far, um, because he because he because he was taking a line that was yeah. that was sort of middle of, middle of that east boundary. I, I actually I think, think he's taking okay. two shots. Um, hey, really. I've got a sneaky feeling he's taking two shots at this, but but he has to move red, right? Yeah. So yeah. so either one of these two shots have to hit, or he's got to play this great cut rush. I would be putting my money on the cut rush here because you've got to move red. I I actually can't quite see the angle. No, it's two shots. Oh, in my... oh, he's actually quite unlucky. Actually, he's actually very unlucky and. Yeah, why? Why I say he's unlucky is because he he hit that in the center. That that is called a mulliner. <laughs> I didn't. Oh, I didn't know that. You'll have yeah, to well, explain that to me. Well, well, there was a very celebrated case where, and it could even have been on hoop thirteen, where Stephen had to do this long range clearance from thirty yards, and he hit it absolutely square in the guts, and it was quite an important game. And out came the fist, with a and and it could have even been an ex exclamation. So it really it, it was oh, it was, nice it, it was a, it a great even, shot. But the but the problem was it, it actually hit the ball square on, sent that ball out, and he dribbled on to about a yard in front of it to allow opponent to send it straight back to corner one in plumb position in front of 13. So, so Stephen's fist pump turned into a, to a groan and a grimace. Oh, why didn't he clear that hard? Robert, I, I would have, I would have. Yeah, 
I, 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 um, uh, I think we've been, yeah, been trying to get that to the boundary. But. I think I would have hit, tried to hit that dead straight, but 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 definitely focus much more on giving Black a full length shot. Yeah. Yeah. So the question is, can Yellow run? No, he can't. But I think wow. it can Jaws, but um, obviously. But I think there's a double clearance coming up. Yeah. And Matt needs to take his time over this because these things can go dis disastrously wrong. Yeah, and uh, you want us to take your time. Oh, oh. Not the best. It's a good shot, but unfortunately for Matthew, it's not the best result. Do you, do you think Black can run from there? Uh, well, yeah. I, I, I think I, it can. Yeah, I think it can. Well, I think it can because Robert's looking at, yeah. at corner one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a new home for red. A new home for red. Yeah. Uh, and that is why that shot that Matt played needs you need to take so much care with that because it's because it's such an inaccurate shot. But but what he did not want was to hit it dead square. And you are tempted to line it up to line up that that sort of mini scatter shot to hit the centre of it. And actually you don't want that at all because that's almost your worst outcome. Yeah. So, red into first corner, as close to first corner as possible. Oh, I mean, he didn't quite, he didn't quite get hold of that. Uh, Matt's a very accurate player. Look, I, I mean, this is still a, it's a 20 yarder, but um, there's not a lot of stalking going on here. But I suppose that's that's Matt's game, eh? Yeah. He, he just he just he walks up to it and hits it. Yeah, he's got a great eye. What a great talent. I, I wish I had that talent. <laughs> it's an important shot, this. He's missed it. So, this. So, you take your shot, right? If I can see it, I'm taking it. You're yeah. going to take it? Okay. That's a, that's a, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting answer to speak about your mindset. What about you? What are you doing here? I, I I like the idea that it's in your hands. You could you bloody kick yourself if, if if you if you if you clear yellow and then you don't have a sh another shot of the hoop, which is very po possible. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! That's How has he come up with that outcome? How has he come up with that? Is dead straight in front, and that hit a, that that was straight into the upright. That didn't get into the jaws, did it? I think he got in the jaws. No, he, he I think did it. Really? I think so. I think it, I think it took a bit of both wires. Oh, oh, he must he must have full foot jump. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, wow. Rob's gonna have two balls in front. Yeah. It's, uh, it's it's far from over, wow, but um, far from over Robert because because he has is, a nine yard clearance. But yeah. but the, you know what? This this ball could be wide. This ball could be blocked. Yeah, a, a, a good blue, a good blue, and it is going to be game over. Well, yeah. That, well, short of a double clearance from nine yards. <laughs> That's too short. Oh, it's not. Ideal. So, good That's, hit from Red. That here. is that is actually a terrible shot because it's going to see Matthew back in it. Because because it, because it was one thing not getting the block, but you really wanted to get in front, didn't you? Oh wow! Oh, and this is not looking good because he's gonna he's gonna be faced with some desperately long shots now. Okay. Okay, Ewan, Ewan has asked us to talk about the pressure you should feel at Hoop 13 in a world's final. I mean, um, I will, I'll start by saying pressure is what you choose to feel. And uh, you can choose not to feel it. Um, but I think that's probably quite flippant because I think there is <laughs> pressure and it, and it can make a big difference. 
um, pressure bulls diamonds. So what is your what is your thought on pressure around hoop thirteen and and nerves and smooth shots and routines? Yeah, um, I'm not sure he can. I, I'm not sure he can run that. No, I don't think so. That was a terrible shot. There was absolutely no no need to go so far. I think I, I think he was concerned that blue actually can't do anything. Yeah. So yeah. so so so, so, so black needed to be good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Look, I think it's. Uh, yeah, I agree with what she said. It's it's really the the pressure you put on yourself. Um, I mean, you could make up pressure for any situation, really. Um, uh, yeah, I don't see thirteen as any different. It, I mean, it's really part of your. It needs to be part of your preparation. I, I don't see how thirteen is any different to any other. Um, hoop that you can test for for the yeah. match or um, any yeah. other match you're playing. It is it is simply a construct of your own head. Yeah. And uh, okay. Yes, yes, it happens to be the last hoop, but uh, I mean it, it it scores the same as the first hoop. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But but I think that's why it's important to because um, uh, as you and pointed out, like um, yeah. Uh, okay, it, it, it's, it's definitely kind of uh, a nexus point for um, perceived pressure. Yes. Um, at this point of, of, of a match and at this part of the tournament, so it's really important in your preparation to um, be aware that uh, be practicing for situations like this. Yeah. Um, and to play um, as you practice. Um, yes. Rather than uh, um, and and be aware of any distractions that that could yes. come up. Uh, so we've obviously got the biggest crowd here today. Um, we've got... We've got two great commentators. <laughs> um, we've got, uh, you know, all, all the players watching. Um, yeah. you, know, you could go on and on with... Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, it, 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 it's not windy here today, but uh, it could be windy. It could yeah. be... The weather yeah. could be terrible. Um, yeah, there could be and, mobile phones going off behind you. Yeah. <laughs> all sorts of distractions. Ooh. There was a bit of a bobble there. Yeah, a bit of a bobble, but I don't, I don't think it was online. So you really need to address that before you come to the tournament. Yes. Um, and, um, and then just play it as any other hoop, any yep. other stroke. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay. So Robert, so, so let's just let's just focus now on 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 this on the setup here. Do you do you jaws this and say, right, Matt, go and go and take your two and a half yard jump shot do you what, try snuggle into yellow i'm not sure you can actually hit yellow can you uh, yeah i think um the snuggles on kind of maybe a half snuggle <laughs> um, <laughs> that's quite a tough snuggle that yeah <laughs> um i think he's but, i think he's, uh, I think he's just think looking to draw this in the draws yeah I, think it, he, I don't think he's got a. He, I think it just called the near wire. I think but just called the near wire. So this is again but a slightly longer jump shot now. What a 50 50? He has. He has played some great jump shots. But, he's, he's but his previous attempt at the jump shot was. Um, I'm giving him 60. 60? Okay, 60. Yeah. I mean, fortunately, Black is not. Oh, he's played a bad poor shot. That did not go through. And there's some. Oh, uh, okay. I think there's a bit of confusion in the crowd there as to whether that went through. I think this is going to go through. So this looks like a promotion. So this is a promotion. Yeah. And game all. So my question is, what what sort of what sort of impact would that have on Matt? He was six four up. He had. Um, well. The the the. The temptation for Matt now is to uh, uh, is to kind of you know dwell on the fact that that he was up in, in game two um, and had the opportunity to uh, to win this game. Um, so you know it's definitely something that he has to address. And uh, the best thing to do is forget is to about forget it about it and, and move on. Get on with it. And it's a score in a book. 
and then you just move on. We have Nelson on my left shoulder. He's probably going to be berating me or shouting at me or being rude to me. Or all three. Why would I, why would I be rude to you, Rich? <laughs> You're such a nice, gentle soul. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, it was uh, that was a great comeback from Rob, wasn't it? Mm. It was. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. He's uh, he's not to be underwritten. No. And underestimated. Yes, I think you. Uh, right. Understand that. Mm. Uh, right. Are we are we still on? I think we're lunch. Off. Okay. Well, um, I think it's time to love and leave you. Um, if you have any questions, please fire them in, uh, and Robert and I will be happy to go and answer them and maybe we're given another opportunity to uh, to talk to you or maybe there, there's some there's some there's some words from the <laughs> from Mrs. Morm to say we'll, we'll never be invited back yes we, 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 oh, we could end up on the band list or something the, band list. Yeah, the scene being anyway uh, but, uh, I think it's lunch isn't it yeah I think so yep cool thanks everyone bye Hi everyone. I think that's going to be lunchtime for everybody today. Thank you all for watching this morning. I'm going to stop the stream. Uh, I'll start the stream again when their next game starts. I won't wait until two o'clock. So keep your eyes peeled and I'll post the link out when I can. I uh, hope you all enjoyed this morning and see you all soon.